Good evening and welcome to the August 2015 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. This is a meeting that's been rescheduled from the week before because, uh, because uh, we couldn't make that meeting. So thank you for all showing up. Karen, if you could call the roll, please. Mr. Hebert? Present. Mr. Murn? Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Stark? And Mr. Richard? Here. As you can see, I am not the... Uh, I am not Mark Maroon, so I'm stepping in as zoning board chairman for the evening, and he can gladly have the position back when he comes back uh, during our next meeting. But um, we have done this enough that we should be able to get through it, and I will guarantee you there won't be any mistakes, but we'll get through it. So um, you'd start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, with the number of members that we have, everybody that you see here will be a voting member this evening. Some of us uh, would not normally be voting, but we will all be voting. Another thing I should tell you up front is uh, part of our laundry, laundry list, um, there are only four members this evening, so what that means is typically you have to have a majority, and with four people, if two vote yes, two vote no, you don't have a majority. So that means a tie is a loss. So uh, as we go through it, you'll get a feel for the direction that we're going, and we'll offer up if you are worried that it would fail and you don't want it to fail because then it would be uh, you can't come back for another year, then we'll put that out to you, and uh, you can make that decision if you want a table at that point until we have a, a larger majority, one that has at least three additional yeses or, or an additional yes to make it three to two. So I'll put that out to you folks before we make that final vote. Uh, let's start by looking at the uh, meetings, meeting minutes. Everybody have a taste, chance to look at that. And uh, if you want to accept them, I'd like to have a motion. Motion to approve as presented. Second. All those in favor? So be it. So we have three cases this evening. Uh, the first appeal is appeal number 2553, uh, limited yard uh, reduction size. It's M. Jane Davis, 66 Mitchell Road, uh, access, uh, assessor's map, R2, parcel 7. So if you could come up, step up to the podium, tell us who you are, your address, and give us a brief explanation of why you're here. Good evening. Um, Jane, John, uh, Jane Davis, 66 Mitchell Hill Road in Scarborough. And I'm here um, requesting a limited reduction of yard size variance to reduce the required uh, front 50 foot setback um, from the front to 42 feet so I can build a 14 by 16 addition on the back side of my house. Do I keep speaking? Or you certainly can if you have more oh, to say. If oh. that's it, then. Um, well, most of the information is in your packages, but I also um, took a couple of 8 by 10s just to show um, the um, to show the side. I can pass this to you if you want, if I can approach, or am I not supposed uh, to? I think I've, I can see it from there. I think there. we can see it from okay. here. That's great. So, um, so this is Twilight Drive, which is a private road off Mitchell Hill Road. And this is the corner of my house. And this is my fence. So this is all um, kind of wooded and, and brush. The addition would go off the back side of the house. Here's the back side of the house. So this is where the fence is over here in Twilight Drive. Um, so we're, the, the proposed addition plan is to move the deck over to the end of the house and build the addition, keep this window, and build a 14 by 16 addition out this way. Okay. And because of the 50 foot setback um, from the survey line, um, I would need um, a um, relief of about eight feet um, for the addition to be positioned correctly. Yeah, and it's inside the existing envelope. If you look at that left edge from that photo, it's inside of that. Yes. Uh, I'll open it up to the board. Any questions from the board? Okay. 
Seeing none. Uh, now, what do you think? Uh, can you have any input on this? You'd like to? Uh, sure. As uh, Jane pointed out, she's got kind of a unique s situation there with Twilight Drive and Mitchell yeah. Hill Road, creating two frontages on her property. Um, I believe the house was probably constructed before Twilight Drive ever was there. And so it, it existed on its lot. And then at some point, somebody put Twilight Drive in as a private road. Uh, and now it kind of pins her in for any expansion because of that requirement for another 50-foot setback on that side. Okay. So as she pointed out, she wants to put an addition on the back of her house, and there's still road frontage on the back of her house. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little bit unique in that regard. And I think part of the reason for the location, if you look, is if she were to slide the, if you want to look at the big screen here that I've got up, um, the addition that she's planning is, is, is you know, fairly modest. And if she were to slide it down so that it was compliant within the envelope, she'd have a patio door, uh, a sliding patio door in her bedroom, which, you know, it works better, obviously, to slide the deck down there, have the patio door. So I think, I think the, uh, if you look at the criteria under the, the limited reduction of yard size, you can see that um, uh, due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures, that kind of makes sense. So right. I think her request, in that regard at least, is very reasonable. Uh, again, it's a very modest addition, um, and it certainly meets the criteria uh, as far as the age of the structure uh, to be eligible for a limited reduction of yard size if the board finds uh, that all the other criteria are met. Right. And the building was, I think, 1928, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you're asking for an eight-foot variance from... Yes. Per the plans, it's 5.9, but we want a little bit of, of room so that we're completely compliant. Okay. And I think that was roof overhang that took it yes. to 8? Mm -hmm. and, and the carp and the uh, contractor isn't very accurate. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Thought I'd have to throw that in there. Good well, shot. He, he good needs shot. a three-foot buffer. <laughs> good shot. Yeah, just, just to be close. <laughs> He does carpentry work that's, like I do. That's my drawing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I had to poke a little fun at Daryl. <clears throat> You're in trouble. So it seems like a pretty straightforward appeal uh, to me. Uh, again, and any other comments or questions from the board? Are there any letters or anything? Any letters to There was reading? not. No. Okay. So nothing from the abutters. Well, the board thinks about it. I'll, I'll, I'll open the uh, meeting up to the public. If anybody would like to speak to this, now would be your time. Seeing no interest, we'll close the public portion of the meeting and go back to the board for questions or comments. Again, this to me is a very straightforward appeal. Can we just go down through the guidelines? Or? We certainly will. If you want to go to that, we will. The questions that need to be answered, and I'll need the applicant to address these. For the record, um, this is, again, being a uh, limited reduction of yard size. The questions are one through five. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, first one being the existing building structure of the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Uh, the existing building was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, as evidenced by a tax record of 1228-87, and I attached the tax record labeled Exhibit C-1. Correct. And I believe the finding of fact of that would be it was 1928. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties utilized in the zoning district. Yes. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Yes, as this would increase the project cost by not being able to salvage and move the existing deck and maximizing the cost bill deficiencies, as well as it would disrupt the existing floor plan of the home by having... Um, well, the deck going way off, plus I was a little worried about the front setback from the front of Mitchell Hill Road, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, And if you were to try to comply with this, what would the shape of that structure be? The shape of? Of the, the building addition? Uh, square. Uh, oh, 14 by 16. R right. But, and that's what you want now, correct? Yes. Uh, that isn't 
built yet. So I'm saying we're going to move the deck over. The deck is where the, the addition is now. Right. We're going to slide the deck over to the end of the house and then put the 14 by 16 addition in so the, the current door that goes out onto the deck actually would be the door going into the bedroom. But if you were to try and put it there today and try and keep it within com the compliance of the law, the shape of the building would be such that the room would be unusable. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah I would have to keep it much smaller. Right. Sorry. No, no problem. And the cost would also blast. Right. Okay. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure in the existing use of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard side <coughs> requirements. I just said correct. Yeah, that yeah. kind of goes back to that same question that we just talked about on that previous question. Right. And the applicant has uh, has not commenced construction of the, or the enlargement or expansion of the building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard side is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. Nope. Well, that's correct. No, I haven't done that. You haven't started. Correct. And I think the other ones are... We don't necessarily need to go through. We just need to have, right? Correct. So what the proposed addition, what is that going to be? On the back side of the house? Yeah, what are, what are you going to use that? Oh, it's going to be um, a bedroom because right now I have a small two-bedroom and when I bought the house five years ago, the bedroom I have now is in the front of the house and it's, it's right here on this corner. So... There's a lot more traffic on Mitchell Hill Road than I thought when I bought the house. So I want to be able to put the bedroom on the back side of the house and have a little more quiet for sleeping and add a three-quarter bath, too. Um, there's another smaller bedroom in the back of the house. That's my daughter's bedroom. So with a three-quarter bath, are you on septic or sewer over there? I'm on septic. Okay. You're, you'll still be able to meet your requirements with that? I, I will because we're going to remove the wall where my bedroom is now and in, just internally and enlarge the, um, the, the front kind of living area. Right now there's a picture window in my bedroom. Don't anybody drive by. But anyway. That's, that's noted on the front as well. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at more so from the tank perspective. From the tank perspective. Of no, you're absolutely right because we, we have to, we do have to right. remove that and not have it be we, a three bedroom. I was just trying to see if they, they needed to have a bigger tank capacity or anything. Would be no, they're not. <clears throat> they wouldn't be increasing the capacity. They're just re replacing one bedroom with an addition on the back. But she said three-quarter bath as well. The bath doesn't doesn't factor into the size of the system. Only bedrooms. Okay. Any other questions or a motion from the board? Motion to approve the appeal as presented. That's appeal 2553. Yes, that's correct. <coughs> Do I have a second? Second. All of those in favor? Yes. Good luck. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. The second appeal of this evening is appeal number 2554. It's a variance appeal of the property of 35 Homer, uh, Wilson Homer Road, tax map 019, lot 016 in an R2 zone. You could, again, you're approaching good. If you could tell us who you are and, uh, and give us a brief explanation of why you're here. My name is Trevor Watson. I work for Ryder Investments. We're the uh, contractors on the uh, job. So um, basically, I sent this in. The, 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 because of the build schedule, the project changed a little bit, So, which is why you got the updated packet. So I, I had these large printouts made so that we could kind of briefly go through them quickly. So basically, these are the...
No. That doesn't nope. sound like it. Yeah. No. Okay. So the, 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 to familiarize yourself with the project, this is the image from the Winslow Homer Road. Uh, and then as you work your way around the uh, western side, the eastern side, the, the rear, and then the eastern side also from Winslow Homer Road. Um, the next page is basically a survey as it exists now. And you can see the amount of structure that exists uh, not on the property. Um, <laughs> there's about 13% of the structure that, that burdens Winslow Homer Road and also burdens in a butter. Um, and then a significant portion of the structure exists within the front yard and side yard setbacks. And then the next page is our proposed. I'm, ju I'm just going through this real quick. Sorry, just to sure. right ahead. Uh, showing where we're going to remove. We'd like to remove all the structures not existing on the property and also remove the burdens to the side yard setbacks. Um, and then there's a page taken from the uh, Scarborough GIS. Uh, showing the, even though it's not a survey, it's sh sort of showing the, re the existing relationship found in the, 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 the vicinity as to garages and properties that are burdening the front yard setbacks. And then, uh, again, some more documentation showing with photographs the number of properties. There's about 25 properties on, on Jocelyn Winslow Homer Road right here. and, and, and even though I don't have surveys for all of them, it's easy to see that more than half are uh, in, in noncompliance. And then the final page is just a sketch of uh, the sort of the proposed uh, d design of what, what we're attempting to achieve here. So having said all that, uh, basically the creation of 35 Winslow Homer Road predates the, the zoning and the current uh, road width requirements. As a result, 13% exists in the off the property on a neighbor's land and also on Winslow Homer Road. Another 51% exists within the front and side yard setbacks um, uh, and 40 feet from the road's edge. So uh, we're asking for a variance to demolish all the structures associated with this property and redevelop about 970 square feet within the front yard setback. And even though it's within the front yard setback, due to the unique circumstance of these private roads, where you have a 12 foot or 14 foot or 16 foot actual road width existing within a 66 foot right of way, there exists a significant amount of land um, which could be, you, you know, in intent utilized as a sort of front yard setback. And that's sort of the, the, the basis for the argument here. Um, uh, we're going to reduce the structures not on the property by 100%. Um, we're going to improve the nonconformity of the lot by reducing uh, structures within the front and side yard setbacks. And then we're also going to increase the distance between the road's edge and the proposed structures uh, from 17 feet to 45 feet. Basically, what happened is the client realized um, sort of his own mortality, and he's interested in, in the concept of single, the single story living, not only for immediate family members, um, uh, but also his own, you know, his own future. And so this proposal is for a garage and then a, a single story, uh, a garage and then a bedroom, a single bedroom, and then sort of a living space all to exist on one plane so he doesn't have to get into the, into navigating sort of vertical elements of stairs. There's capacity in the ground, in the lower level, for future bedrooms for, you know, to, to maintain sort of the value of the property because, you know, people have, most people buy this property would have more than, you know, the need for one bedroom. So um, uh, I'm just, I'll just go through the question questions now or do you want to? Uh, why don't I open it up to the board to see sure. if you have any questions? Absolutely. Uh, I have a few questions myself. Could you explain the, the relationship between lots 31, 33, and 35? A little bit better to me. Sure. There, are, uh, thirty-one is uh, Mr. Zilka's um, primary vacation home. It's a John Calvin Stevens home that we renovated in two thousand and six, and because it's a sort of a historic home, built in an old-fashioned way, there's not really a lot of capacity uh, for an elevator to be installed without significantly impacting the 
sort of historic nature of the house. 33 is a property uh, that Mr. Brazilka bought in 2009, and uh, it currently is his uh, guest house. And unfortunately, uh, due to the nature of how 31 Winslow Homer Road is oriented, because all of these sort of homes existed kind of prior to zoning, 31 Winslow Homer Road is oriented in such a manner that it looks out across 33 and 35. Uh, and so the danger of having uh, sort of um, a, a, something that, that negatively impacts uh, multiple homes along Winslow Homer Road, not just his, it, it also includes 29 Winslow Homer Road, which is owned by uh, somebody else, as well as 28 Jocelyn, which is owned by, uh, by somebody else. It, it's just an it's a it's an odd and unique lot uh, in 35 in that there's this knoll that exists in sort of the 30 foot above sea level range and then the the property dips down to about 20 feet in the sort of uh, you know in elevation and then climbs back up to about you know 25 28 feet as it approaches the ocean. So, and it also gets quite wide as it goes out towards the ocean. So there's this sort of uh, like fishbowl effect that had, the, the potential exists for, for, for that, for something to happen there. And the uh, structure you're demoing is under the, foot, the new footprint for the new building, correct? So in, initially, yes, yeah. The structure we're demoing, we are proposing to replace in uh, in um, as much as practical. We're, we're existing to develop over the existing development as much as practical. And the, why I say it that way is it's, it's impractical. We're trying to be better neighbors to the K's in, in removing the existing burden in their side yard setback. So we're also trying to reorient the house so that um, it, it better follows how the other properties along Winslow Homer Road are sort of addressing the road. And uh, so due to the reorientation and due to the existing impact on the side yard setback burdening the K property, we've had to pull it down. But we're still trying to maintain the majority of our de development impact where the current development impact is. And you said the, uh, is it Zilkas? Yes. The Zilkas vacation home is on 31. That's their primary, that's the, the first home that they purchased. 33 is owned by a separate entity. It's, it's just owned, it's, it's owned by Mr. Zilka, but it's, it's in a, a trust name. Okay. But it is in a trust name, not his. Yes. Uh, to tell you that, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's in a different ownership. Okay. Are you sure? Sh it's an ownership he controls, but it's yeah. in a different ownership. But it's in a different ownership. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And 35 is owned by him, but that's not his primary residence. It's a rental property? No. Okay. It's, he's not going to be renting any. I mean, I don't know that it, it I, uh, I don't know if it matters, but he's, I mean, he's not going to probably sign a document saying that he's not going to rent it, but he doesn't rent any of his homes. But it's not his primary residence. It's just a investment home or they're, they're actually living in 31. They vacation in 31, yes. Okay. And then guests stay um, and his daughter, who's just had a child, mm -hmm. stays in 33, which is the guest house. And then he bought it as a protectionary measure and then sort of tried to figure, you know, has figured out this use for it, which it, it, it'll, if we're, we can do this sort of single story living, it will fulfill the need of some, you know, his, his parents are older and they can't navigate steps so that they can't stay at 33 Winslow Homer Road because there's stairs there. They can't stay at 31 Winslow Homer Road because it's an, it's an older house. So, this, you know, this, there's like 10 steps, 10 risers up to the second floor. So they're like, you know, eight inch, eight and a half inch rises okay. each step. The, the reason I'm asking is the type of variance that you're into, which is a variance appeal, it has two of the hardest questions to answer positively for for the board. Sure. So it's going down a path that it's going to make it very very difficult for you to uh, justify how this will work, and we can approve it in a in a positive fashion. So uh, I'm just kind of warning you. Probably get your work cut out for you. 
I, us I usually do, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, any questions from the board? Need some more time to think? We'll probably have a few before we're done. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take this uh, time to open up the meeting to the public. If anybody wants to speak to this, they certainly can do it now. Seeing no one, I'll close the public portion of the meeting. The letters, oh, excuse me. Thank you. I got those right. We have three. Oh, is that correct? Three. Okay. And this is, the first one is from George Gillespie. And he's actually from New York, but it's he is in the property of 35 Wilson Homer. Excuse me, 32 Wilson Homer. Uh, please accept this letter as my endorsement for Michael Zilka's variance request for his modified building plans for his lot of 35 Winslow Homer. My wife Eileen and I own the property diagonally across the road from the Zilka's property and believe his proposal will serve to beauty, beautify the immediate area for everyone's benefit. We couldn't be more pleased. Thank you. Second one was 28 Jocelyn Road, Natalie K. In regards to the appeal 2554, the request for a variance by Michael Zoka on the property of Accessors Map U19, parcel 16, I urge you to approve the same. I represent the K Family Trust. Our property adjoins the subject property, and we are very much in favor of the granting of the variance. And the third one is Albert Barclay of 36 Homer Road, across the road from the property that is owned by the Zokas. Um, we have seen the design or the drawings for the structure that Mr. Zoka intends to build and believe the proposal will only serve the, to improve the appearance of the property, so clearly they are in support of it as well. Anybody else from the public? Seeing no more interest, we'll close the public portion of the meeting and go back to the board. Questions and comments? So we just go down through the... You certainly can if, if it's time. Questions at the time. Okay. There are four questions with this type of appeal that we have to agree to all of them. What I will do is I'll go through them one at a time. We'll take notes on the questions as we go through. You're, you're going to be answering the questions directly, and then we'll ask questions. First question is, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. The, this structure currently exists as a seasonal home, and it is uh, the, the foundation is not such that um, it, it's, it's not resting on a modern foundation. And uh, the natural topography of the lot results in the um, uh, northern and eastern sides to have a significant grade change between uh, ele elevation change between the grade and the existing deck, which uh, due to the many years of deferred maintenance that this house has seen uh, incre increases the possibility, uh, coupled with the, the uh, ever increasing storms, increases the possibility of catastrophic events of happening. Uh, as it exists, because so much of the, of the structure is not on the property, um, th we're currently not allowed to, sh to shore up the entirety of the property. And it, it, uh, it, it's not logical to expect a homeowner to make the investment to uh, uh, pour a, a, a modern foundation, to, to create a modern foundation under a portion of his property while allowing the remaining portions, uh, under, por uh, under a portion of his house while remaining the, the while, oh, sorry, excuse me, while allowing the remaining portions of the structure which need to exist on um, a, a non-modern foundation to sort of move with the uh, with the seasons, um, it, it would be it would be opening up uh, a, a, an almost constant maintenance issue for the for the structure as a whole. Uh, the variance will allow us to locate the structure entirely within the property and in close proximity to where the majority of the structure has historically existed, and is echoed and enforced by similar structures existing in similar locations to be found in close proximity. It should be noted that due to the conditions specific to this lot, a 40-foot setback um, from road's edge will continue to exist. And this is due to the 14, 16-foot wide road existing in the modern 66-foot wide right-of-way. 
additionally, this, the, the structure exists in its current location atop a knoll, as I spoke of earlier. The rest of the lot falls down as it travels towards the ocean to then climb back up when it gets to the, the cliff walk, when it gets to the water's edge. So um, that, and that climbing back up happens within the 75 foot shoreland zone, so you can't build within it. Uh, so building within a hollow, which is essentially what the legal building envelope of this lot is, uh, would impact the value of the property through not allowing existing views to be, uh, to be able to be maintained, and to a lesser extent, accessing that hollow uh, through the, the, the tight, uh, steep, narrow terrain to travel down would um, add an incurred development costs and a loss of reasonable return. So it's entirely reasonable to expect the ability to maintain one's own views in rehabilitation and renovation of a project, which is why the house was initially sited on the knoll and uh, why we're seeking a variance to rebuild in as close a proximity as reasonable while improving the lot and removing all the structures that don't exist off the property. So we're unburdening the surrounding areas. And also, you know, we're, we're hitting a lot of the zoning. We're not hitting all of it, which is why we're here, but we're, we're hitting a lot of it. We're, we're going to, you know, clear the side yard setbacks. We're going to maintain in intent a 40-foot front yard setback. Uh, it, it's not a lot. This road is never going to change, um, you know, so that, that, that is going to exist. And you said clear all the structures? I'm sorry? You said you're going to clear all the structures off the lot. What, what do you mean by that statement? Uh, I'm, I may have misspoken, so I'll just say it again. We're going we're gonna to demolish everything that's on the lot currently. The structure that's on the lot. Yes, but we're also going to remove, we're, we're not proposing, we're going to remove all the structures that don't exist but are tied to this lot that, are, that do not exist on the lot. Okay, could you explain that? What do you mean by that? So currently there's a garage there's 350 square feet of garage that exists in Winslow Homer, in the Winslow Homer Road right of way. Yeah. There's also a portion of the structure that exists on 28 Jocelyn. So we're going to, in removing all of the structures, we're going to alleviate that problem. But it's still all one structure. When you say all the structures, it's yes. one building structure that happens to be on different properties. I mean, there's a garage that exists on Winslow Homer Road and also in the front yard setback. Okay. So is that going to be demolished and not replaced? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So anything that's not on the property right now is going to be demolished as well? Anything that's not on the property that is, you know... Wouldn't it be easier just to say everything that Mr. Zilka owns on that <laughs> particular, uh, that's assessed on that particular parcel, whether it exists on the parcel or not? Is what you're going to remove? Yeah, I would. I would agree with that statement. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be clear. No, I, I appreciate the clarification. Uh, so that's my argument for the um, reasonable return. Okay. Any questions from the board? When you were first discussing this with us, and I can't remember what you said. You said that the owner had bought the property as I don't know. I may be wrong. Buffer or something like that, or they had just bought it to have it as an additional property. To yes. me, that's getting into this reasonable return thing we're looking at, because they bought this recognizing that fact, that they may not be able to do anything to that property. They just bought it as a buffer or an additional property to have, so they can have that whole area there. OK. They, I mean, I think the principal interest was the buffer. Uh, because the buffer would still be there even if they took the property down. And they could still get a reasonable return on what they bought the property for. Right, but they couldn't, they, they, the, something needs to be done to the structure, to the existing structure that's on the lot. And so selling a, selling a parcel of land with a structure on it with three stories of views from that structure versus selling a parcel of land with an oceanfront parcel of land with a residence that has one or one and a half stories of view is a, is a vastly different uh, financial equation. Yeah, but now you're questioning reasonable return. Now, reasonable return does not mean maximum return. 
That's that's the toughest one. That you yeah, have no, no, I, I'm, I'm just and, thinking. You know, I'm just working right, here. That's, <laughs> and, and, and we legal. have no way of notating it as maximum. We, yeah. Maximum is kind of out the window for us. We need to look at it as what it says in our guidelines, reasonable return. Can he have a reasonable return on the property? And so it would be reasonable to expect a return on a property where you have where you, where you are standing on a structure that affords you views of the ocean the return and i'm not suggesting maximum return but the return on a structure where you are standing in it and looking at a wooded lot would have a, a different amount of return i mean it wouldn't be it, if if uh, let me say it this way if it's not reasonable to expect ocean views over property you don't own. I mean, couldn't the, couldn't the converse be said too? Again, that's not a decision that we're here to decide on. <laughs> so um, as much as I empathize with the applicant, that's not part of our decision-making process. The question at hand is the landing question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. So really what you have to do is look at all the options you have available to you. And if you do nothing, does that create a return? And if you do something, does that create a return? And is it reasonable? So do nothing is always an option. It's not always the best option, but it is an option. So under this question, I'll go back to you. It's difficult to answer, but if you can the question is, can it yield a reasonable return, not a maximum return? See, I, I don't think, I, I think that's, it's tough to quantify the difference. And I don't think it's unreasonable to expect on a buildable lot. If, if nothing is done, the house will need to be demolished for, for life safety issues. Mm -hmm. And that would be less of a return than what currently exists. Would the would the board agree with that? <clears throat> well, the, I mean, is that my, my assumption of is the applicant primarily purchased it as a buffer. They knew what they were purchasing when they purchased it, so they knew the condition that the property was going to be in, and that it was going to be having to require some type of either demo or, or rebuild within the envelope or, or whatever it may be. That, that's the toughest one. Right now, I, I can't see. You haven't given me any reasonable return, any reason that this satisfies this question. Right, so I'm trying to chain together some stuff here. The, if, if the board views a, build, if the board views a, a buildable lot, uh, with no structure on it as the same value as a buildable lot with a structure on it, then, then no one can ever achieve an, a, 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 a positive answer to the first question. That's why it's so difficult. That's why it's <laughs> in there. <laughs> it's almost an unanswerable question. But shouldn't expectation exist that the, it's a, it's a habitable lot. And, irrespective of, of why my client purchased a lot, he still deserves to get reasonable return and reasonable return on a, on a property with a, a residence on it with views of the ocean would be like kind to have a modern, to be afforded the ability to build a modern structure on that lot of similar with views of the ocean. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, this is a question and answer now. Please, please. I haven't given you a chance to speak on it on this one so far, so I'll just, I'll I'll certainly just, let, now it's time to hear from the town. I'll just throw something out please there do. for consideration. Please do. Um, the courts have held actually that, you know, if you can go out with a picnic lunch and spread a blanket on a lot and, and view the ocean, that's reasonable return. Mm -hmm. So that's a really tough test, okay? But in this case, you'd have a much better argument if this was the only lot that Mr. Zilka owned, but he controls three properties. You could combine this lot with the lot next to it and, and, and add an accessory unit, <laughs> a one-story accessory unit to that and not have to meet that side setback between the, the two 
parcel lines and still build within the buildable envelope and not even have to request a variance to do that. So, so there's reasonable return. That, that, that's, I mean, right. that, right. that's and an you, example. Right, and you said that, but it, reasonable return of combining two, you know, individual control, lots. controls all three. So, so combine the two lots, build an accessory unit on one floor with a garage in the, in the allowable envelope, no variance requested, you're done. <laughs> Brian, why don't you bring this up at the meeting that we have? <laughs> That's a good question. I think I'd maintain that uh, lots... I'm just being the devil's advocate. Yeah, I, I think I'd maintain that lots, of, in, in all seriousness, lots of this size command a certain amount of reasonable return of financial, and I understand that reasonable return is not just the financial component. However, having said that, th there is a an outlier ability here. If you if you all of a sudden have a four acre lot in a sea of one acre lots, are you going to achieve the return of a, a reasonable return of four times the value of f four one acre lots? And historically, the data has, has shown no. So I would I, I appreciate Brian's stance. I wish I'd known about it earlier, but <laughs> I don't think you know I I I. I think that I don't think that it's fair to to be I don't know that it's pertinent to the variance and please correct me if I'm wrong how many properties Mr. Zoka owns or or doesn't own I mean I I don't think it necessarily matters in this case but uh this isn't his primary residence either and well, I, I think the, but the, I, I don't not that that is a question none of those forgive me case. but I don't think that that's a requirement either. Right, not in this case either. So I, I agree with that. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Would you care at this point or is it too soon to survey the members? As to I think it's too soon. This? Let's get through the other questions first. I, but okay. I, I think, well, actually I'd like to stop the questioning for just a sure. moment and give the town to speak more on this because I didn't give you that chance before we went into the questioning. Yeah, was there any more you wanted to add? I, on? I think I've said plenty. Okay. <laughs> Well, you've had open discussions with uh, with this a a appellant before, yeah. and I didn't know if there's anything else you wanted to add before we went <clears> further. <throat> well, originally, the only thing I would add is originally when, when Trevor first approached me about um, the possibility of applying for a variance, uh, one of the compelling reasons uh, was that Mr. Zilka needed um, accessory, he needed an accessory building. He needed a garage, which he didn't have any place to, to put other mm -hmm. than on this lot in the discussion that ensued was how can you have an accessory building when you don't have a principal building if they're going to remove all of the structures then build a garage you don't have a principal building so right if only the two lots could be tied together that wouldn't be an issue but because they're separated by this parcel in a different ownership entity even though it's controlled by the same mm -hmm. person you've got two distinct separate parcels so the 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 conundrum that Trevor was facing was how do we how do we get him his primary goal of storage and have a principal dwelling during the process Mr. Zilka rethought the whole thing and, and as Trevor explained came back and thought well you know this is this is actually a good thing we need to build, build a dwelling here let's build a dwelling that I can yeah. live in in my old age and and that's really all I can add to it at this point uh, and not to, you know, certainly anybody has the right to appeal anything, basically, but it's different in my mind because he controls the three properties. It's not a, it's, it's not a, I, I don't want to ding the owner for having control of three properties, but it doesn't carry the same weight as if some individual came in owning that lot, bought it for the principal uh, use of, of the residential dwelling, and didn't have the ability to combine it with the lot next door because they didn't own that. So that's that's the point I was trying to make with that. Yeah. So it yeah, it's a, it it just has a different. And, and I do commend flavor. you on removing the properties that aren't on the property. That's great. <laughs> I mean, you've got some good ideas. It's just it's going to be very tough for us as a board, especially with four people. I think to get past that number one question, we can certainly go down through the next three, but I think that's going to be a, a catch one. And I, and I would like to push through just in case. Uh, mm -hmm. It is. If we go the direction of tabling, we have to give them direction as to what we would be looking for if they ever came back. Sure. So, 
Well, the, in the final, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're going that way. I'm just saying it's be we need, it's behooves us to go through all the four questions. And, right. and just one one yeah, more thing. It, sure. There is a buildable envelope there. It's a small buildable envelope. Right. And they are pulling it more in compliance. And, and They're coming off the front. But, and coming but off the, the side, fact so. remains that a structure could exist in the buildable envelope, and yes. that's the hard, another hard part to get over. Yes. It's great that they're making more, or, or excuse me, making less non-conforming uh, plans here, but the fact remains that you have a buildable envelope that you could put a structure in, right. and that's really where you have to go first. Would that have to be a two-story due to the size of the buildable envelope? Yeah. It's it possible. have to be anything. Yeah. It's whatever you want to design. Okay, let me pull it back together if you guys don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more questions on question one or comments from the board? We'll come back to it. Sure. Let's go on to question two. Need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition of the neighborhood. So 35 Winslow Homer Road is a non-conforming lot with challenges uh, and features, which we've discussed here, that differentiate it from its neighbors. The existing house predates zoning and road width requirements, which speaks to a portion of the structure existing outside of the property line. It's also a uniquely shaped lot with uh, a topography that naturally drops in elevation as it hooks in front of uh, uh, adjacent lots. Um, and I'll add that's, that I didn't write here, not, it, it hooks in front of other lots that aren't just, I mean, not necessarily hooks, but it would be impactful to other lots that, that aren't under Mr. Zoka's control. Uh, also, I would just, you know, I just want to reiterate that this is, uh, you know, this is, um, this property is, is extraordinarily unique in how the existing development, the existing road, uh, and the existing road interact with the existing road width requirement and the existing property lines. So, you know, if the, the, the board can view, the, the, the town can view a less than 40 foot setback in this zone <clears throat> as an, an, sort of an undue burden on the, the community. But the same thing can be said that, um, you know, a, gra a greater, an imposed greater than 40 foot front yard setback is effectively another burden and it's a you know it's a burden on this property which further differentiates itself and that's unique to this relationship between a 15 foot wide street 16 foot wide street and a 66 foot wide right of way and nothing in Scarborough zoning uh, really really deals with that thank you I would think on this question I have no problem with this because it's very unique I mean, I would think that's the simple finding of the fact. You've got properties that are not on the property line that are off. You've got properties built on ledge. Um, you've got a very unique circumstance for this existing property. So I, I have no problem with B. Any other questions or, or comments from the board? I, I'm in agreement with that. I think this is a unique property. Um, I think we need to look closer at the buildable envelope that's on this particular lot. And I think we'll come back to that. But I agree with you on this statement. Anyone else? Okay, let's go on to question three. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. The variance we're asking for will take a non-conforming lot and structure and make it significantly less non-conforming. The positive impact will be will be fourfold. First, we'll remove all the structures existing outside of the property, reducing the current impact, and reduce the current impact to the front and side yard setbacks by 50%. Second, we are reducing the structures in close proximity to the road, both in, uh, to Winslow Homer Road, both in mass from two stories to one and in footprint from 1,900 square feet to plus or minus 970 square feet. Third, we will increase the front yard setback from negative 21 feet to positive seven feet, which when combined with the actual road location will effectively provide the 40 foot front yard setback. Fourth, utilizing the natural topography of the property to our benefit allows a residence to be imperceptible from the road and also from the ocean uh, as our structure exists with zero impact to the shoreline zone. What are the size of the structures adjacent to it? Uh, in terms of square footage? Yeah, roughly, the, just ballpark. Yeah, uh, 33 is um, probably about 4,000 square feet. 
Uh, 28 Jocelyn is, I would say, 3,500 to 4,000 square feet. Uh, 32 Barkley is is probably 5,500 square feet. 36 Gillespie is probably 5,500 square feet. 33 is probably five, six thousand square feet. And this finished structure would be. Um, it not, was it 900? It, it would be about no. It would be about 2,000 square okay. feet. Yeah, I mean, if you include the basement, which at, at, at the lower level, which at this time is sort of unfinished, um, what would that add to? to well, that it would be about a thousand square feet per additional? floor. Okay. Yeah, so it would it would be in total two thousand square feet. Now, my question for you would be would be putting a two thousand square foot structure back in place where you're between four thousand and five thousand square foot homes. Is that within the character of that? I'd, I'd just like to note that the I think I said 33 was 3,500. Okay. And if you go down the road to 26 Jocelyn, that's a 2,000 square foot house. Okay. Um, and if you go what in. What was that number? I'm sorry. 26. 26, okay. Jocelyn, uh, I believe, is 26 Jocelyn. It's, okay. the, it's, the, it's the K of butter. Okay. Oh, Jocelyn. I'm yeah. sorry. There's 26. Uh, uh, there's 26. That's that's good information for me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because this, this size there's you can see yep. right there. Uh, I, on this one, I mean, and I don't know if it's considered finding a fact or not, but it, it's it seems like it's enhancing. Well, it's a newer care, structure. You're bringing it up to modern codes. Yeah, there's it's no taking question. things that don't belong yeah. where they're built out. So... But th this was around character. That's I'm just that was specifically my question. Okay. But if there's another property close, then I think you got an argument there. Yeah. <laughs> there's two down. It's one. <laughs> uh, any other questions on uh, on the third question? Mm -hmm. Comments? Okay, let's go on to the fourth. The hardship <clears throat> is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, I, I would say no. No work prior to this has reduced. Uh, the ability to make this property and structures on it less conforming. Um, less non-conforming. <laughs> and when did he purchase the 35 lot? Two, 2011, maybe. And 2009 was uh, 33? Yes. Okay. And 31 was when? Sorry. 31 would, would have been 2005. Okay. Um, I'll hold my comment. I was just thinking. Well, in, in a way, I kind of see where you're going with that, especially where Brian said that it was originally going to be built as a garage, but then you had to put a structure with it because that was probably the primary purpose of purchasing this property. Last sale date was 11-30-2012. But that one's a hard stretch if we're going to go there. I mean, if I could add, it, it was the, to be, being totally upfront, it was the primary purpose of this because he already had a guest house and he already has a vacation house. But one we came back to him and said, you can't, the town won't allow an accessory structure without a principal structure. We thought about what, you know, how we could utilize this land as it, as it is intended. You know, I mean, these, these parcels are not really intended to be vacant lots. They're intended to be residential areas. And so fulfilling the need as sort of a, a whole, uh, uh, an accessible structure for his, uh, limited m mobility family members as well as himself you know anticipated in the future um he he's quite he, he's uh, you know he's on board with right yeah but he, he did create the action to buy the property to put a garage on it so yeah but i don't think but i don't i don't, I don't think know you create if we're a really going by down that property road. so that, i think that's right. the fatal part yeah so uh, again i i think i can move on it was i think i, think I might I have known on. where you were on it but yeah <laughs> yeah I was, I was kind of going that way, but I don't. I don't believe what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's not good. 
Okay, so we've gone through the four questions. I'm looking for comments and questions from the board. I have a comment regarding the existing foundation of the property. You say it was deteriorating. Do you know um, how quickly, how fast? Uh, is there going to be a time frame when the property would just be uninhabitable? So it's tough to say. The, these structures are, there. I mean, they're 100 plus year old camps that are basically built on, they basically take a, flag, a flat stone, throw it on the ground, and then put a tree trunk on top of it. Right. And it's not, with Mr. Zoka owning this, you know, I, I mean, it, basically the way you do this is a, is a constant maintenance battle where you inspect the property and you replace the rotten posts. Um, the garage does have a slab on grade. Uh, however, it's uh, cracked and, you know, heavily deteriorated. And, and you know, there's always the chance that, uh, oh, you know, with, with as much maintenance as you can do, something happens and portions of the structure get lost. And the issue with that is if portions of the structure gets, get lost, even though there's no real tangible you know, uh, bartering chip that's happening without some of these elements, it, it would absolutely not be uh, possible to ask for a variance, I think. So as time goes on, Mr. Zoka is sort of forced in a direction, whether or not he wants to go that route. Right. What would be lost if you were, if you were to completely build the property in the envelope without any variances needed, what would be lost by putting a structure there with a garage? And Within the legal building envelope? Yes. Uh, I believe reasonable return I, I'm, I'm not asking lost. reasonable oh, sorry. return or anything. I'm asking Physically? what portion of the structure would not be built if you had to put that in there? Uh, we would probably not build the garage because of challenges. It's a lot easier to access. We would keep maintain the parking up here in this in this range uh, and it's going to be a lot easier to access a structure that's in the hollow via you know a footpath or something like that uh, you, you know navigating that terrain with a vehicle it, w it would require a significant uh, sort of uh, you know earthwork kind of deal going on so all that living area right there because he really wanted the garage, all that's needed for this structure. Well, I think I think if we could respectfully move past the he really wanted the garage, because now that we've presented him with this option, he really wants a garage and a single story. Okay, but what living. I'm saying is, if you were to put that garage in a single story residence, what would he lose in his single story residence? If you, if you push the, the garage envelope? back to the envelope, yeah, what's it knock out of the structure? Oh, it, okay, so if we slide everything yeah. down, so there is, if we slide everything down, I mean, it, it, he's not going to lose any square footage per se. You know, again, I'll, I'll reiterate that it'll take, it, it'll be an added burden to, to deal with, you know, there's probably, you know, four or five feet elevation change between the existing location and, the, and the, the start of the legal building envelope. He'll be, in my, in my opinion, further burdened by a, a greater than 80 foot effective front yard setback. Uh, and the, you know, the structure will, if we do not step the structure, it will be, there'll be a significant uh, impact to the cliff walk. But it could be done. It could absolutely could be done. No, I and I don't I I don't mean to imply that it can't be done. It's just at what you know at what cost. So if you look at the lower right hand corner, you know that that this is the this is thirty three, this is thirty one. If this were pushed out more, it would give the appearance of being projected higher into the in you know, into the air. And it would I mean it would look like a three story structure. I mean conceivably we could there are some of those down there. Uh, I would say they're two and a half story structures because you start, you do start to run into height restrictions, maximum height restrictions. You want to take a poll, Mr. Chair? <laughs> I'm going to take an informal poll. How's that? Okay. This is not official. Sure. I appreciate that. 
uh, on question A, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. What's your opinion? I don't think it. I don't think it meets that. I don't think. I think there's there's options here, and there are. You would like to see other options considered. Yeah. Okay. I would be the same. I don't think it meets it. There are other options. We just that there are other options. Yeah, I, it may I, not be the cheapest option, but there are other options. I, in addition, I will say that I think that's our way out of this, is if we look at other options and exhaust those, I think that's the way to go. I have to concur. I, I'm trying to find a way out of this, but uh, I think we have to look at another option for this as well. I appreciate your input. I just can I just ask a question? Certainly, please. The I, I'm failing to understand how variances gain approval if views are not considered reasonable return. That is not part of our criteria. Isn't there a financial component to the to the reasonable return? There could be, but it's people's opinion. And that's not one of the areas that we try to delve into. I mean, there are good things about this project that we like. There aren't oh, any yeah. complaints from anybody. No. You have no, no, I, letters from the abutters. Yeah. Um, it's bringing a structure that may not be up to date, up to date. You're pulling in from properties where we wouldn't want the structure to be in. Those are all very positive things. But the question is, will it yield a reasonable return? if we don't grant this. And I can't look out in the future and say this property is going to be fa it's going to fail beyond use in 5 years. We don't have the technical ability or the vision to be able to say that. That hurts the person that owns this property because they're trying to maintain it and they're trying to improve it and increase its value, which I think all of us as property owners ourselves want to do the same thing. But when we're sitting on this board we have to answer the questions in good conscience, in good faith. And if it ever goes to court, we need to back that up with fact, not opinion. Mm -hmm. So right now, to me, the facts lean towards you still have a reasonable return with the structure if you try to maintain it or if you do a modification to it but not quite as big as this, meaning pulling the envelope back to that buildable, that buildable envelope. And so you, if you squeeze it back, then I think this question, you, you've done your due diligence in trying to keep it within the buildable envelope. So it's easy to answer this question saying, yes, it does have a reasonable return. Now, what you have to do is look at what that costs to get you and is it worth doing or not, if that makes sense. Mm. I, I believe the option would be for us to table this and you can go back and revisit that and come back for us because if we officially vote on it and it's denied yeah no i understand that do you think that there would be an argument that you could foresee that would sway you to i mean if it's being built in the envelope if it's being built in the envelope then that's something that we strongly look at but outside of the envelope i mean i'm not you know i can't go for limited reductions because, because of the shoreland zone they go within the envelope is if he's in the envelope, he doesn't. Yeah, I don't need it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, we don't need a, a different I, kind of a type of variance. We're, we're uh, good, right? No. no. Um, it, if he were to retain some of the original structure, then he could potentially maybe jigger it so that a limited reduction of yard size might be applicable. Yeah. But I thought it's shoreland, though. Doesn't it? That doesn't matter because you're not. We're not reducing the setback to the resource only to oh, okay. the property lines, the sideline, and the and the street line, and that part of the parcel, that part of the structure, is not in shoreland zone. Well, you so. could talk to the owner about Brian's suggestion. So you think you yeah. think that if we build within the envelope, that there may be some options. And I'm asking your opinion from the town. Well, again, if he builds within the envelope, he no, I, I think with the the, the development. Right. Yeah. What's the that? existing, the develop, it, it building, oh. proposing within the existing development or footprint. If you utilize the existing structure, you mean? Right. Yeah, I think there there are some, some, there are options. some options for having a viable structure that would work for the 
but I, you no. know, it all, <laughs> it's hard to answer because I don't see I, a proposal I know. in I know. front and of And you me. don't know what they're looking for. Yeah. It's a yeah. opinion of the I mean, have you done an assessment on what it would cost to put a foundation <coughs> under the, the structure and, and, and bolster the existing structure and, and maybe does that structure lend itself to an elevator so that it would be easier to access? We haven't, in, in, because we can't, we, can only, you know, we can't do all of the structure. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I think the board needs more information. For example, you know, the comment that the existing structure needs to be demolished. Well, maybe a structural engineer's sure. report would help us understand why that is. Uh, your description of the existing conditions is good, but we don't have a professional. Not that you're not professional, but. I'm, uh, I'm not. <laughs> it, more, more, uh, you know, more supporting argument. I think would be necessary to to satisfy the board on some of those points. I think that's a fair um, statement. I I would echo the chairman's comments. I think you've done a great job at improving. You know, with the proposed, the proposal in front of us, it's a great job at improving things, many things about the parcel and the structure, but it's still, again, the. The, the whole reasonable return thing is, is a tough nut to crack. It's probably the toughest nut to crack. Um, so just just for my own edification, this last question for the everybody else that's waiting. Uh, if I came back, if we came back with a proposal that was inside of the setbacks, but within the existing footprint, I could then go for a reduction in yard. No, you'd still have to retain some of the original structure. Right. It, you you can't wipe the structure away because now you, you don't qualify because there's no longer a structure there. That could I come be, could I come before as a as a variance to do that because I'm meeting the requirement of a of another variance and if, I mean for all, coupled with a structural engineering review. Uh, again, the Just question hard, that question, hey. the yeah. question that's stumbling is, can you yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted? And regardless of the envelope, really, that the question will come back to us now that you're within the envelope, you're still coming for a variance, and can you answer the question any different now? Right. And I, I don't know if I can. Okay. I think Mr. Longstaff's suggestion of possibly, if you can do what he's suggesting, coming possibly a limited reduction in yard size if you keep some of that envelope of the building maybe uh, that's just it, it gets I mean, us right. away from that reasonable sure, return I understand. question right it's not on there i can't i can't do a board. side yard and a front yard though right can it only uh, be one yeah no you could do you, can? you okay, could do great. a combination okay you've done that it's before. a different set of questions under that the other thing trevor too is 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 that um you can't come back with the same request in a year but if you substantially changed mm -hmm. if you if the design substantially changed and the setback uh, variance requests were completely different, different numbers, you know, that kind of thing. You could also, I mean, that, the board could entertain another variance request sure. inside of 12 months if it was substantially different than the original one. Okay, Just great. To be clear. Perfect. Thank you very much. I've so, so, yeah. Uh, oh. What are we doing? <laughs> right. So it sounds like we want to make a motion to table. Yes. So motion it's Motion to table. Appeal. What is it here? 2554. Yeah, that's correct. Second. For further information. Further information so you can work with the town and see if you can come up with another type of variance or work within the envelope itself without having to need a variance. Perfect. Does that makes sense? My yep. variance question is still going to be there. <laughs> okay. When does Mark come? Oh, no, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? The table. He would have only been one anyways. <laughs> and he probably would have gone the same way. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. And, Have a good and night. Again, the towns will work very closely with. No, you. no, I, I, I have experience in that, so I appreciate it. Great. Thank He's you. Probably not going to talk to me anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, based on the comment, yeah, I agree. Could have told him up front for crying out loud. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Twenty-five minutes just done. Moving on to appeal twenty-five fifty-five, which is a variance appeal. Or hang on, I got to get the right page up here. Uh, 19 Vespa Street. Mr. Fisher. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board. Uh, Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions here uh, this evening representing uh, the Daytons. 
at the request for a hardship variance, hardship because a portion of their property is actually located in the, uh, the very back end of the shoreland zone. Doesn't matter how much, we touch a corner of it, so it uh, puts the whole project into, any project, into a hardship variance request. Um, the board may remember that uh, we were here earlier this year uh, requesting a functional division of this property. There are two cottages that are currently on the lot, one forward and one immediately behind it. Um, as we'll also probably recall, uh, those of us who were here, the pension of the board at that time was, we ended up tabling that request because the pension of the board at that time was to say, we really don't feel comfortable utilizing the criteria of a functional division when we're looking at uh, uh, structures that are up front and then behind as opposed to side by side. Uh, we certainly understand that, took that to heart. Uh, this project was actually, uh, the, the two houses that are on there right now, the project the property was actually marketed for about three and a half years unsuccessfully. There were a fair number of people who were interested in one or the other of the cottages, but literally nobody wanted to buy both or buy the property with both of them on there. And uh, the board had suggested when we were here this uh, past springtime that it would probably be much more palatable to try to market the project not with the two cottages on it, but as a single lot. Uh, let people tear down those cottages. They were only seasonal cottages. One was actually a fisherman's cottage uh, that was brought in about 80 years ago to the lot. Uh, but tear down those cottages and, uh, and then rebuild a, ostensibly a single house uh, on that property. So that's indeed what the, uh, our previous clients had done. Uh, and lo and behold, when they marketed it that way, they had a, a potential buyer in about uh, six weeks. And uh, that buyer has subsequently purchased that property uh, based on some of these comments. And they have now submitted uh, before you the variance request regarding a uh, single family house that will be uh, constructed on that property. So what we have essentially is a, a 50 by 100 lot that has two cottages on it that we're proposing to have removed and replaced with a uh, single um, uh, individual single family residence that will uh, show on the, uh, the plans that you've got where that will actually fit on the lot. Now, interestingly, we've been able to uh, uh, design a house. Uh, Mr. Wilson, Walt Wilson is here, who's the architect on this project, and he was able to uh, design a house that is considerably more conforming, uh, albeit still non-conforming because the building envelope with most of the projects and most of the lots that are in Higgins Beach uh, would never have uh, significant building envelopes to be able to rebuild any structures nowadays anyway. Uh, so what we did was we, we reduced the non-conformity on all three sides that are non-conforming, which means there are all three areas, which is the front and both sides. The back was not an issue before and it's not an issue now. Uh, we meet all that criteria. Uh, Brian had a comment earlier in his uh, comments to staff that uh, we may want to think about this given the, uh, what we believe are going to be the eminent zoning changes. Uh, that is a, certainly a possibility, but uh, in this case, uh, it's a time equation, as you're all aware, for Higgins Beach. We've got some significant time constraints. We can't really do, we meaning anybody, can't do any uh, significant construction, external construction, until the middle of September. And then the season pretty much starts to close down with the posting of the roads around the middle of November-ish. Uh, winter construction, while anything can be built during the winter, it gets a little bit more challenging to do uh, uh, setting the piles through the frozen ground. And this, this house, I'll get to that in a minute, uh, will be on piles because of its location in the, EH, uh, the uh, erosion hazard area zone. Um, and then uh, winter construction is fine when you've got something framed in, but it's a little bit more challenging during the winter, particularly the winter like we had last time or this past year. And then again, the, the window of opportunity that we have in the springtime is also limited to about two plus months before Memorial Day, at which time there's a unofficial memor a moratorium where uh, build any significant building is highly discouraged in a non-emergency situation. So given that, the Daytons are ready to go, actually. Uh, they've got their uh, contractors lined up and they hope to be able to uh, start demolition and then construction, at least for the piles to get into the ground and ostensibly to get a house framed in uh, this year. And then uh, hopefully they can work on that over the winter time, they meaning the contractors can work on that in the winter, finish things up as we go into the spring, and they would ostensibly like to be able to move in uh, about the late spring, early summertime of next year. Uh, given that, we certainly understand the sentiment. It just doesn't happen to work with the Higgins Beach issue uh, because of this very narrow window of opportunity. So in the interest of brevity, given that, uh, you have a bit of a background. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have, and then we can go over the criteria when you're ready. Okay. Mr. Chairman, before we yes. go into that, I just want to disclose that I have a relationship, a business relationship with Mr. Fisher that I already spoke with you about. Yes. I don't feel it's going to 
have any problems with my decision making. Just wanted to open that up to the other board members. Certainly, in disclosing that, what I'd like to do is open it up to the board and see if there are any issues with us continuing as a voting member. No. I agree. I'm just going to put it to vote just so it's clear for the three that are here. All those in favor of allowing this to continue? I agree. So, we're Thank good. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Seeing none while they're focusing, I'm going to go to the town. And uh, anything you'd like to add to what Mr. Fisher said? Um, sure. Uh, I put forth some staff comments um, on this particular proposal. Yep. Um, it's a standard variance because the property is in the shoreland zone. Um, so again, he has to meet the same test as the last uh, appellant. Um, the the uh, narrative indicated that they were reducing the overall footprint, but I haven't seen any lot calculations or actual building calculations, footprint calculations. So I, it's hard to verify that. For and sure. Mr. Fisher, do you have those numbers? Yes, yes. As far as the footprint is concerned, I have a percentage of lot coverage. Uh, the overall percentage right now is about 36, just in excess of 36 percent. <laughs> Uh, the new house would uh, cover 34 percent, plus the uh, th again the reduction on both sides where, where the house is being narrowed. To yeah. where the building envelope itself is only about 18 feet wide because of the uh, parallelogram skew of the lot itself, uh, and then we don't have any problem as far as depth is concerned. What about impervious surface? Um, it's, I, I don't know Current what versus my future. Head, well, actually, it would be the same because, uh, well, the impervious surface right now is going to be slightly greater than the 36.5% as far as the houses are concerned because there is actually there are actually two driveways. Um, in this case, uh, I don't have the figures for the impervious surface that would be in there now, except that it's 34% as far as the house coverage is concerned. Right. And the, there would be a, only a single driveway there, so it would be less. I just don't have the exact figure. Okay. But what about the area in between the two cottages? Was that was that non-vegetated or vegetated, or partially vegetated and partially non-vegetated? Uh, there's there's partially non-vegetated. Most of it is vegetated, but you're we're losing, also you're losing all of that. Well, we're not really that losing. We're right? losing that particular area, but we're also um, narrowing up the house. When you take a look at the superimposition on your plans, there's a superimposition of the new house over the old cottages, and uh, there's a good portion, particularly the front cottage. Uh, that is outside of where the new cottage would actually fit on the lot, uh, which is why we're getting more uh, conforming, or less non-conforming, I should say, than the cottages are right now. It does take up more space in the middle, but that more space is then uh, obfuscated by uh, the narrowing of the house relative to the cottages that are now. Well, because, because the majority of the house, the majority of the project is inside of the 250-foot shoreland zone, we'd need to see the actual figures on that, the actual square footage and the percentage of lot coverage, non-vegetated surface, not only structure, but non-vegetated surface. Uh, okay. All the structural information is, is on the architectural plans. Right. But we don't have, unless, unless I've missed it, and uh, I, I don't see any of those calculations. Well, my other thought is uh, you said that between the two structures it was 34 to 36 percent. Existing 36, you're going down to 34. That gains you about 2 percent. Uh, looks like the lot's about 50 by 100, which is about 5,000 square feet. So you're only talking about 100 square feet. Basically. Driveway would probably be more than 100 square feet. Well, if, except that there are two driveways paid. now. Okay. That, and we're only so going to one. You're going to, you're I don't going have to the exact figure. It will all be less. Okay. Based on what you see, I just okay. don't have that. But, how much but less my it point, will actually be? My point, Mr. Chairman, if I may, my Please. point is we don't see it on the site plan. We don't see the calculations. We can't verify anything without those. You know, we don't know what the driveway is going to be. It's not even shown. So, so there's some missing information here, which makes it very difficult to, you know, make some decisions. Yeah, I guess we would need that information. I agree. Um, the other thing that I failed to point out in my staff comments is I. I I didn't realize this. I guess I, I missed it somehow. But there's actually an accessory unit being proposed. Is that what that is to the right of the rear building? At the back of the building, if you look at the floor plan, I'll bring it up here. Okay. So here's the floor plan. Oh, I see it. And if I can scoot over, I just failed to I failed to raise this issue in my staff comments, and I wanted to point it out. You see two kitchens here. You see a kitchen 
if I can move my cursor up up here yeah. and, and, and a here. kitchen here. So there's an accessory unit in the back of the building and under normal conditions that would be fine. Um, in the shoreland zone it's it's considered a, a second dwelling unit requiring that what the lot all the dimensional requirements be met for the additional unit. In, We've had this issue raised before by Mike Morse of the D, uh, Maine Department of Environmental Protection Shoreland Zoning Coordinator. So that is still an issue um, in that this lot's only a 50 by 100 lot, um, barely 5,000 feet, 5,000 square feet. The minimum lot size in, in the R4 zone is 10,000 square feet. Um, so I, at this point, I don't think there's any way we could approve the accessory unit, although it's not mentioned in the in the proposal, so it's a little bit of a. That's a good pickup. Um, I didn't see that either. No, no. Wait, wait a minute, Brian. You and I discussed that earlier, and I thought that the feedback at that point was, as far as the zoning is zoning board is concerned, that we're looking at the one structure, and that if it goes in, in conjunction, it's not a separate building. That you would, as the codes officer, not that you would, but you would be able to. No, the conversation that we had, Jim, was that it was a bone of contention with the DEP, and that they might consider, if we amended our ordinance, they might give some consideration to them being in the same structure as opposed to having a separate dwelling. That hasn't been done yet. No amendments have been made to the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, and the and the finer point is that if you look at the definition of dwelling residential dwelling unit in the shoreland zoning ordinance it doesn't it doesn't give us the same definition that we have in our regular zoning ordinance which says accessory units are not considered dwelling units so we, as you know when you have two overlying ordinances it's always the more restrictive that rules and Mike and I have started to have that conversation I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's the interpretation that's there, and it's clear in the definitions. So our hands are kind of tied at the moment on that accessory unit issue. We may be able to work out something just as, as we may be able to get an increase in the non-vegetated surface. It hasn't happened yet, but verbally, Mike has agreed that because of the average of all the, the properties that we surveyed, seem to be about 35 percent non-vegetated surface um, that might be the new norm as opposed to 20 percent which is far more restrictive and the reason reasoning for that is because of the storm drainage and and the fact that that's the settlement pattern at Higgins Beach oh, so, right. so there's right. some things that that may come along <laughs> they're not there yet and, and the accessory unit is one of those things we're not there yet Okay. As for you did mention, I appreciate that. Um, you did mention as far as lot coverage is concerned, because we're reducing the lot coverage, and again, I apologize, I don't have the actual figures here, and we can certainly provide that to you, um, but that has never been an issue as far as the DEP is concerned, if we are reducing the coverage and moving and or moving anything further away from the And I agree with that. I just zone. need to see it. Okay. Okay. I need it to be verified for sure. Those okay. calculations need to be provided. Yep. Um, the other, the only other thing that I would I would bring up as a staff comment is is the fact that the building that's being proposed is. Let me see if I can find it here. The buildings that are being torn down are are both single story structures or a story and a half. One, uh, and a half. one single story, one's a story and a half. Yeah. Okay. And so the proposed structure is basically two and a half stories maxing out at 35 feet in height at the ridge. Um, quite a bit, quite a bit different than the existing structures. I don't have it on that one. Let me go back here, just for the board's information. If you uh, if you were building a house at Higgins Beach in the permitted envelope 15 feet from the property line you would be limited in heights to 30 feet if you got if you went any higher than 30 feet you'd have to increase the setback so that you were no more than 50 percent of the height of the structure yes but we talked about that as well because keep in mind that because of the eha zone where we have to be able to elevate the property it has to be on piles we don't have a choice it has to be yeah well i'm not so concerned about I'm not concerned about the elevation due to the due to the floodplain or the uh, excuse me the, the dune. 
what I'm more concerned about is that you're going from a one and a half to a, a, a two and a half or better story structure instead of a two story structure, which this whole wall, if you look at this front elevation, you get to the front elevation, the front elevation is on the right hand side of your screen. That's what you're going to be looking at from the street. And this side here, that's the right side. This, this view, this left elevation, is the view that's going to be looked at on one side of the property, which is the closest side of the property, the seven-foot setback, I believe, right? On yes. The, on the left-hand side looking at it. So that's, that's quite a difference if you, were, if you were to stand on the property line looking at this as opposed to what you're looking at now with the two cottages. That's a really distinct difference. And because we have that 50% setback rule, we really, I think, as, as a board, there should be some consideration given to there's no stepping of the height of that building. It starts out at the max height, basically, at the eave line. And, and to me, that's, that's an issue that we're dealing with in the zoning rework that we're doing now. And I think it's certainly a consideration. I don't know if any of the folks that are here in the room have any, any comments, and that certainly would open it up. Um, maybe, I don't know. But it's, to me, it's a concern that we shouldn't fail to address as, as we consider the structure. So those are a couple of things that I didn't get into my staff comments, um, and I apologize for that. I kind of rushed through it, and then I was examining them further. And uh, those are just some additional thoughts that I normally, I guess, would have included in my staff mm -hmm. comments mm -hmm. and failed to. Um, so again, those are points that I think the board ought to be at least considering and, and, and uh, debating and questioning, and, and um, that's that's really all I have. To okay. Say. Are you saying that we need to see the driveway and the vegetation on here before we can? Well, I, I, the, I, I think that you need to be able to verify what the, the difference is. We're, they're saying they're reducing the the the, the uh, footprints of the building by com by taking the two buildings down and combining them into one. It's it's less footprint. There's two driveways there now, but then there's vegetated area in between the two buildings that I'm I'm just not comfortable guessing that it's less. I'd like to see the actual geometry and the calculations and 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 actually show the driveway depicted on the plan. I can't pick off that site plan if that's even shown on mm -hmm. there. I don't know if anybody's got better better eyes than I do. I just can't I can't see that stuff. So to me, that's important stuff. If it's in the shoreland, it's very important. If it's not in the shoreland, which a lot of Higgins Beach isn't in the shoreland, we're only dealing with building footprint. Right. And, and so it's not a it's not an issue. In the shoreland, it is an issue, and we're required to look at that. So we need to see that in a, a new set plan. That's what I think. But again, I think, I think the way we can move beyond that right now is we can have Mr. Fisher work with the town, make sure that that's published, and as long as it meets what was said here, we're okay. As long as it's less, we're going down and not up, I think we're okay. But again, we have to state that. I think, I think for the time being, <clears throat> the board's real purview here is to look at the setback issue and... And the four questions. And, and the four questions. Correct. The, the actual lot coverage, um, I'll retract that because that could be covered under the building permit request. Right. I have to look at that, or the code but, office but, has to look at that before they can issue the permit. But as part of the board's information, we should normally have that. And you usually do a great job. I'm not saying you're not doing a great job here. Do a great job in supplying that. It would benefit us to help that here. Yeah. And I think we can continue to move forward without it saying that we need it. And as long as it meets the criteria, which will be checked by the town, will be okay. If it doesn't, that kicks it out. So we could make that contingent you can, upon correct. You can make, make that, that as a condition. condition. Make yep. sure. Correct. Yep. I think that that would be okay. acceptable. Right. Okay. So no more comments for the town right now. We'll come back to you. I'm shutting up. We will come back to you, I'm sure. Um, any more questions or comments from the board right now? What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the meeting to the public, see if there are any comments from the public. Yeah, if you would uh, state your name and your address. I will. Um, my name is Philip McGoldrick. live at 21 Vespa Street, down at Higgins Beach. Okay. And I have a few comments that I want to make. 
Uh, my family has lived at 21 Vespa Street since 1947. We were there in the 50s when they put the second cottage on the adjoining 50 by 100 lot at 19 Vespa Street. Both cottages on that lot were single story and had space between them, and we didn't have any problems with that. If the, build, if the building that they're planning to put up there is approximately, and I graphed it out, 70 feet long and 35 feet high, I'm going to feel like I'm in New York City um, when I look at that side of the building from our house. Um, we, uh, we have had um, two houses, two cottages across the street from us, and we've had one beside us that have been redone over in the last couple of years. And they fit the neighborhood. They, they blend in beautifully. They just did a nice job. They didn't build some monstrosity. They, they, they fit the neighborhood. And as a matter of fact, um, the neighbor on our left, uh, the whites, they're only uh, three feet from our property line. And we came and we spoke in favor of them because we saw the plan. We felt like what they were asking was a reasonable approach. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're going to hear complaining about everything, but this is a, is a giant building sitting on that 50 by 100 lot. Um, I know that um, you're going to be working with the Higgins Beach Association, looking at the ordinances for the beach. We've had notification of that down at the clubhouse. And we'll certainly be there, you know, because we, as beach residents, as long as we have, we have that concern. Mm -hmm. We we don't we just want everything to not stay the same, but be reasonable in in their approach. Certainly. Um, and that's about the about the size of uh, what my notes are. Okay. I can give you a copy of them if you want. I think we're okay. You're on public record. Okay. If I can paraphrase for you, your your biggest concern is it changing the character. Of the location. Exactly. Okay, thank your, you. Your Article 3. Yep, thank yes. you. Anybody else would like to speak? Please. Same condition if you can tell us your name and your address. I'm the wife of the co owners of that property, 19 Vespa Street. I'm Mary Ann McGoldrick. And I picture a 10 foot driveway and a seven-foot setback, mm -hmm. and put that big picture up there again. Uh, Marianne, can you lower your mic for us? Just pull the mic down. Yeah, oh, yeah thank I'm you. So, I'm sorry. No, I just want to hear you well. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, that's, it's right there, and it's huge. Um, and I, I, I guess I can't comprehend that the combination of that little, shed that was in the back, the little house in the back, mm -hmm. and the footprint of that house in the front, that this thing is actually 2% smaller. I, I just don't see that. Yeah, and they're just talking about the aerial footprint if you were flying over in a plane, that the footprint has gotten smaller, not the, the cubic feet of the volume of the building, just right. the square footage that takes up that lot. So that's what they're saying. Right. And the, the setbacks, I think, are are really important, especially for mm -hmm. um, our side of the our side of the road, and uh, the also the the view of the ocean. Right now, from our second floor, there is a view of the ocean. That is history when that building comes in. But and, and I'm sorry. Could you clarify what address are you from again? Twenty one. Twenty one. I'm sorry. I misheard you. So are you saying that? In your assumption, too, that would alter the character of the neighborhood dramatically? Definitely. And we have seen the houses that have done it right, the way, the way we... In your opinion. In my certainly, opinion. Certainly. In my opinion, mm -hmm. the ones that seem to do fit the character of the neighborhood much better. You certainly. Know. I'm almost all the way, all the way up Vespa Street. All of the renovations that have been done in the last 15 years have all been very, what I would call classic conservative mm -hmm. thank you thank you anybody else please and again <laughs> same rules if you state your name and your address please uh, my name is Llewellyn McGoldrick and I'm a co-owner co at 21 Vespa Street 
And as my brother has pointed out, we have never uh, objected to any of the other construction that's gone on around us because it, it, it was unique and it fitted in uh, to what the neighborhood really is. And uh, to, like we're worried about that big wall right outside our window, um, not too far away. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the town is thinking about changing and its ordinances and things and setbacks, uh, we'd like to see maybe a delay to see what the future holds. Um, it just won't fit in right now, to be honest with you. Again, you're, thank you. you're questioning the character of yeah, the structure. Yeah, question the character. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Certainly, please step to, to the mic. This is all, this is all new to us, but um, when you look at the two cottages, there's mm -hmm. a space between the two cottages of, I don't know, 10, 12 feet, whatever it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the back side of those. Yeah, I don't think you can get there from there, but. The, the Chalbet and the Judith on the back side. There's yeah. a space in there. There's a visual break. Yes. Well, it's, they put cars in there and everything else. Um, the, my question is that. If they're staying within the same footprint, that means they can fill in that middle section that's... No, that, that would count as square footage. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah, if you look at, and I, if you could, well, I don't know how to do this. Can you, can you put this, if you uh, Yep. As soon as I get done playing here. <laughs> it's like you were going to play basketball. You know, it's like a kid. You get them on the internet, you can't get them off. It's here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Um, if you could zoom in a little bit, uh, you see the big thick line that makes up a semi-rectangle in that view? Yeah. That's the new structure. And then behind it, you see a hashed area of a building in front and then a building behind it to the left. Right. So if you look at that footprint, it kind of goes outside of the new structure's envelope. And then if you came more towards the front, the building in the front goes more to the right. So it's adding up all that square area that sits outside, and you put it in between, and it kind of fills in that gap. And they're saying if you add up all the square footage of the big dark versus the lights, it's 2% less with the new structure. And that's, it's just the, the plan view looking down as a bird would fly over. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the volume, because no, don't I forget understand. those existing structures were one and one and a half stories. Yeah. Now you've got two and a half stories, so it's a much bigger volume. That's just, that line is just drawn in a little bit. And that's the back side on the top, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's just drawn in a little bit, but that whole space. Yeah. It, it will all be filled in, no question. So the, uh, the person who was speaking <coughs> stepped away from the mic. He was just saying the area between the two buildings is now going to be filled in with the space of the new structure, and that is correct. And someone just said, wow, so. <laughs> so this view, this view is the whole structure. Correct. So you, you know, it, it's a, the middle part of that left elevation is where the space was or would have been between the two cottages. It, it's quite an impressive structure. Okay. Uh, any more comments or questions? Are you sure you don't want to make it all for you? We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Seeing, seeing no more interest from the people in the public, thank you very much for speaking. I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and go back to the board. Do you have any letters or anything? No letters. We did not. Uh, there are no letters. But I would, I would, we, we've heard from three people. Right. I just didn't know public, if there were so. any more. No. Oh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, please. I'd like, uh, please, the board, I'd love to have the architect just uh, come up and explain a couple of Certainly. things like that. We haven't heard from you for a while, so please. Hello, Walter Wilson from Design Company. Um, I heard some comments about the size of the building being an impressive size and all this. I want to bring to the board's attention that this building is actually less in size than some of the others I've done down at Higgins. Um, one of approximately the same size, but slightly bigger. It was just finished up on Ocean Avenue, which you come in on, on the main street. That is just about the same size as this house. Uh, the setback is just about the same thing 
as what this proposal is from this sideline also. And it's done in such a way that when you drive into Higgins Beach, if you hadn't been there in 10, 15 years, you'd think that house had been there for 40 or 50 years. It fits into the character. And I know character of a building at Higgins is a questionable thing depending on who you're talking to. And I look at it as a ongoing changing character of Higgins Beach because of the improvements that are taking place. And the character of the new buildings that are built are not the same as they were 40, 50, 60 years ago out there because of the new things you have to put in to a building today than you didn't, than you didn't have to do back then. Now, talking about that, this does have what Brian called an accessory unit built into it. There is a reason why the owner, who actually happens to live at Higgins Beach, by the way, um, had been looking for a lot that they could do a building which they needed for their needs. They have a special need child who's growing up. And she's living on her own, but she can't live by herself. And this lot had two living units on it. So the two living units had already been established on this lot. And the proposal is for what Brian calls the accessory use, which is actually the second living unit, which is going to be for their child, who is around 20, 21 years old now, has to have supervision all the time. That's the reason for that unit that's in there. Um, the overall size of the building, we are hindered by the fact we have to be on pilings and raise it up out of the ground and the first floor is going to be over five feet off the ground and so we have to get the building to fit within the 35 foot DEP maximum allowable space. Uh, the square footage of the proposed building is slightly less than the combined footage of what's there now. So in designing this building to satisfy the owner's needs and what they needed, we aren't trying to build an overly built, too big of a building that requires all kinds of extra things in the house. It's pretty much what they need when you can, because we've got to put that second unit within the building. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. If you look at, you're looking at square footage and saying the plan footage is less, right? Or, or the plan percent less. The, the, the lot coverage footage is less. What is the usable footage within the building now? If you looked, you had a one story and a one and a half story, I will almost guarantee you you've doubled the usable space in that building. Probably. So one of the questions That's we're going to be asking, on though, a lot of the houses that we do at Higgins Beach. No, no, no question. But you, you know. had two smaller buildings. So I'm, now you're going to hear my concerns. Mm -hmm. The question I've got to answer is: This land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless variance is granted. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe, when I saw this, that someone was trying to take advantage of us. Well, I got up Wait, to speak. Please, I, I got up to speak just to the architecture of the okay, thing. Okay, let me let me not, finish, please. Not that part. Um, so, to answer the question, reasonable return cannot be gained unless I give you this variance. Why would I give you this variance? I feel like someone's trying to take advantage of us. Build within the buildable envelope and don't come to us. It's impossible. Explain. The buildable, buildable envelope is like 14.5 inches wide. I know. So it's impossible. I know. So that's why I'm saying I would like to see a reasonable approach. Because I don't think this is reasonable. I think you guys, uh, not you, I think the owner wants to maximize their profitability and not worry about reasonable return. The owner wants to reside there for the rest of their lives. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I, to be honest with you, when I saw this, I went exactly where these folks were talking, the people that spoke, is I wouldn't want you to put a drive-in theater wall up next to my home my one-and-a-half-story home, and you put a sale next to it. I can, I I can, un that. I can understand what, what you're saying. Yeah. I can. Uh, all I looked at that, I looked at that but side elevation, and I okay. was like, wow. But I've also come to this board before and got the same size buildings, everything improved. 
And I think you're seeing the change. I think one of the reasons why the zoning is being modified is that the board members went to the town and said, we've got to do something different. And I think they're coming up with a very viable and op uh, a reasonable option for how we should be building in that area. Because the lots are so small, there are not constructible lots. I know that. But that doesn't mean that you should have huge homes down there either. It's not within character, which is question three, mm -hmm. of that area. Yes, there have been people that have got the puck by the goalie. I think that's happened in the past, and I don't think we're going there anymore. Well, I, I, I think that the home that we have here is in character with the current conditions that are happening at Higgins Beach. I don't think it's out of character. But would you say it's in character with the two residences that are right located next to it on either side? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Would you say it's in character with the residences that are located right next to it in the immediate vicinity of this? No. Their character, their home is different. But they could do the same thing. And I think that's what we're trying to avoid for everyone. But I think in the long run, it comes out for a better community. And it depends on how you define better. Yeah, it does. Affluence, same, same as you tax look at, base. Same as you look at everything else. It's an eye of beholder, you know? That's right. But I, I, th this house that I've got here is, is, is not excessive as to what I've already been doing at Higgins Beach. And I think, again, like I've said, I think where we have been and where we are today are two different places. So what I'm going to throw out to you is I think... But I'm working with the same guidelines that I have right along. Guidelines haven't changed. Okay, so, so I will... But I'm, well, how are you supposed to do any design work? No, if, no that's fine. If I will you're put, thinking that things are going to change, but they haven't yet, and you're, you're hindering myself and my applicant because of what you think is done before should be different now. Well, we have no guidelines to go by that have changed, the same guidelines. But what you're saying to me is, over time, I can't learn. I can't make different choices based on experience. Oh, sure you can, just and like I, I do too. But we have guidelines to go by. If you're setting up a, a situation now where you're saying our guidelines for this project should have been different because you want to do something different, I can't hit a moving target. You're right. You know? I agree. But that's why we've had meetings down at Higgins Beach. You know what's coming. Oh, yes, I participated in the meetings. Yeah, and I was there too. Yeah. So uh, I'm with you. And I, I think that's the direction that we are going. So, my, again, my recommendation is not just me, is that I think we ought to wait until that ordinance comes out and that would more closely adjust the size and look of this structure so that it fits in the character more eloquently more accurately with where that area is going to be and I think it also fits in the the more closely with the reasonable return okay well I want to address the second unit for a minute sure um, Brian has called it a, a, an accessory unit <coughs> back when I started on this project I had talked briefly with Brian with two or three other jobs at the same time and this property has two living units on it now. And originally I was I had thought of proposing it for under the non-conforming use section of the ordinance, where it says any non-conforming use can be brought to the board for an enlargement, expansion, demolish, alteration, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the site has two units. Existing use of the property is for a two family. And so I was going to bring that to the board as well as the accessory use so we aren't trying to slip in and leave from building. We're going to look at it as a non-conforming use redo on the lot. So that we're going to, I was going to come under that section of the ordinance. Um, the little apartment that is there does fit within the square foot allotment of accessory use. Mm -hmm. And... Under accessory use, though, we have the situation that Brian brought up about insure land zoning and accessory use has to meet the setbacks and so forth. So my question to you then would be, if we came back with this as a uh, um, the, the, 
the um, non-conforming use two two unit on the property. Yeah. And where do you sit? Right. Certainly. Then we wouldn't be confined by the accessory use definition of being in the zoning or the shoreland zoning, mm -hmm. because we have that two units already there. Right. Um, so that would probably be part of what we may have to do in the explanation of this. Now the other thing. Can you give us a, dis a minute to discuss that? Maybe we can come up with an answer. No. Yeah. Okay. You've got two structures on the lot now, right? Yeah, Walt, Walt raises a good point. There's two structures on the lot. <clears throat> yeah, but you could say one of them is the primary and one of them is an accessory unit. You could say that. You could possibly say that. Right. My, my only concern, in, and unfortunately I didn't get comments back from Mike on this particular project. I'm only going by other projects that he's weighed in on and had a problem with it. I don't know once you... Once you demolish the two structures, you, you've taken that away. I guess I need to, I need to get no. some legal guidance on can we then combine the, the two units into yeah. one. I think if you look at the ordinance, what you'll see is that a non-conforming use on the property um, isn't eliminated until more than 12 mon months of right. non-use. So if the buildings were destroyed and the new building built within the tw 12 months, the non-conforming use has not gone away yet. Yeah, and, and that, may be, that may be the legal interpretation of that. I just, I only raise the point because Mike has always pointed to those accessory units as not being allowed. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd need to get a clarification on that before mm -hmm. I could be comfortable. But I, I think there may be that leeway there. I, I raised the issue just because I hadn't gotten comments back from him. Obviously, they weigh in on our shoreland zone um, variances, and I wanted to make that known to the board because it wasn't specifically pointed out in the application that there was an accessory unit there. Yeah. And, and actually, I do remember we talked about it, Walt. Yeah. We, I talked to a number of people, oh, yeah. and yeah. you in particular, about, about multiple <laughs> projects, and yeah. I failed to recognize this one as one that we had talked about, yeah. but it wasn't specifically mentioned in the narrative of the... Uh, no, of the, and like I said, the owners of this property, when they purchased it, bought it knowing that it had two units on it and knowing that they needed the accessory use or a second unit within the building, mm -hmm. which is the reason why they ended up purchasing this one at Higgins Beach for that reason. What's the need for four bedrooms? Uh, the immediate family takes the th three bedrooms and then they have the attic bedroom for their second families, mothers, fathers, in-laws, that stuff that come for summer vacations and so forth. What would you say the average number of bedrooms in the homes being built in Higgins Beach is now? Um, between three and four. And I bring that, I say between three and four. We just came in here three or four months ago with an appeal for one I did. They had a three-bedroom house, and we they went up into the attic. They had the fourth bedroom just like this one's doing. Um, um, three bedroom houses uh, on some of the th uh, three bedroom houses on second floors we have a space downstairs which would be either a dining room or a guest room depending so that's why I say three th three to four depending on the well, this on the one's properties. got an office space too right. so that could have been a bedroom what's that that could have been a bedroom which one the, the office, office space uh, he runs his business from home and he needs his office space how many bedrooms in the two existing structures I'm not sure. I don't know. Can we, you don't think it's four, though, do you? Yeah. Pardon me? Well, you don't think it's four, though, do you? In a one and a half and a one story? In that footprint? You're done. It could very well be two in each one, for all I know. But you, I mean, the bedrooms in those cottages yeah. are only about eight Two in each eight. one? Is one of those the living room? Just checking. Yeah. All right. Well, I should say on the assessors, too. We should be able to see that right there on the property report card as to how many bedrooms are in each unit. It's not a public meeting, so we'll, we, we can get to that if we needed to. You know, that existing front cottage, if I remember right, when it was roughly measured, is like 32 feet wide. It's quite wide on the property. Oh, and the front best. steps, I think, are four feet from the one. front street. And we're going to push the building back about 10, 12 feet further. 
and the building is only 26 feet wide, so the front yard's going to be opened up considerably considering what's there now. So we're trying to reduce that front yard setback quite a bit. Um, and also the side yard setbacks, if you look at the plans, the existing buildings are closer than this. Now I understand, of course, they aren't as high as this proposed building, but the proposed building fits within the, the uh, uh, limitations we have as far as the size of buildings and so forth were allowed down there. So considering what we had originally with the two cottages with the space between versus this building being a one building, yes, there's going to be a difference. But, you know, like the board knows, the state of Maine has no site view restrictions either, so. That's right. So are there three family members right now, each having their own bedroom? I'm are sorry? You, are there three family members right now, each having their own bedroom, including the child that needs to have the accessory unit? The, the child that has the accessory unit has her own. Okay, but there's two other. And, the, and there's the master bedroom with two others. And then you go upstairs for the, for the guest bedroom. Okay, so they have two other children in addition to the child that has? Yes. Should we go through the questions? Any other questions from the board? Comments? So I just wanted to get up and just kind of give some insight as to why we ended up with what we got. All right. Thank Any you. Questions? And to show that it's, you know, and my my position is it's not bigger than what the board's approved before. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? You want to go through? Just th three couple comments, Mr. Longstaff. Yes. Didn't you say that the spot size was would not allow a accessory unit because of its size being 5,000 square feet if if you were to apply the the standards on a brand new house if there wasn't the two dwellings already there that's kind of a, a the, point of contention that I've got to look at um, as far as interpretation goes but yeah if you were just replacing a single family dwelling and trying to put a single family dwelling with an accessory unit there the shoreland zoning standards indicate that you have to meet all of the dimensional standards of an individual uh, single family dwelling for both dwellings so you'd need 20 you need a 20,000 square foot lot okay. in order to put an accessory unit or a second dwelling unit on the uh, on the uh, property okay in as all this discussion for the character of the neighborhood and whatnot I I just hope zoning repair fixes this because I don't I agree with these folks. I don't think that's a very neighbor-friendly design. 35 feet so close off the property line is going to give you that feel of New York City. I mean, I, I've seen it down there, and I, I think it's, I hope it's addressed because I don't think it's right. I think you, you have these people with these cottages, and you, you, you come right out, you step over their line, you come up 35 feet. doesn't seem to make sense to me at all. And, and if I can speak to what you're saying, uh, Mr. Wilson has a good point. Our board has allowed this in the past, but the time that's changed since we've made those decisions till today, I think I, I can speak for myself and Mr. Stark. We've gone to training on how the board is supposed to judge on these type of appeals, and we are now we are now educated or more educated than we were before. So to to go back in time and say I know you approved that, you're right. That's why I'm saying you might have got one past the goalie. Not you in particular. I'm saying people in the past may have gotten that bias or our opinions may have changed. It's because we've been educated. And I know there are multiple other members of the board that have now gone to that same training. And on variance type appeals of this type, basically the MPA says it's not the exception to approve them. It is the exception that you don't approve them in a 90 or 95 percent case so and we have been very open to letting these kind of things uh, pass in the past and when we realized that we might not be going in the right direction that's when we started talking to the town about changing the zone to make it more clear so that we don't feel like we have to compromise because and again in a quasi judicious state that we sit we have to answer these questions in good faith and I think some of the board members, and I'm, I think I'm speaking for Mr. Maroon as well, because uh, he was not on the board at the time, um, I think we are changing the way we look at it. So, yes, it may seem like we're changing the rules on you, even though the rules are the same, 
it's really opinion is changing, not the rules. The rules have stayed the same, like you're saying, but our opinions of the people sitting at the board are starting to shift because of education. We're now, I'm hoping, better at what we do. Might not seem better if I'm in the position of turning one down, but I think we're better at what we're doing because from a legal standpoint, we're making better conscious decisions so that the town doesn't have to go to court for decisions that we make that are bad. So, again, I'll get, I'll get off my soapbox. And I, I think <coughs> we're, we're adhering to the guidelines. I know there was question and discussion about guidelines and guidelines, and we have very specific guidelines. Correct. And some of those trainings have pointed out to us that we've been deviating from those guidelines in a way we may not have should have been. Yeah, well, so. I think... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and so we're we're really focused on making sure that we're we're following to the letter of the law as to how the guidelines are and taking everything into account and making sure that we listen to the people. And we've always listened to people down there, so we appreciate when folks do come before us because it gives us a much better perspective because we can't necessarily drive down there ourselves and see your homes and see the other homes. But I think we've got two challenging ones on this one, so. Now, Mr. Richards, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you had two, uh, three questions? You got well, one out there. The third was what Do out there. Mr. Crockett just said. The, okay. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board? And Mr. 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 Fisher, Wait, please. Yes. Um, I'm just going to interject something here since we seem to be on the topic, and this is not specific to this particular project. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have discussed a little bit about this before, and that is uh, practicality tends to be far ahead of... Um, bureaucracy, as it were, um, in terms of zoning changes, notwithstanding the eminent zoning changes that are coming with Scarborough. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting at is that uh, because of the eminent changes from FEMA, as far as the flood hazards are concerned, and uh, not really recent, but uh, somewhat recent uh, changes by the Maine Geological Survey in uh, expanding the erosion hazard areas that are out there, Please keep in mind that in the future, not just with this project, well, although it is germane to this project, but uh, others as well, when you see it, a, a, th this actual project is basically a two-story building with dormers off the roof. It's big. Let's call it what it is. Um, however, because of the flood issues that we're dealing with, even though none of the regulations have yet caught up to this, we are required, because of the EHA zone, for instance, and the flood hazard zones, to take any houses that are being uh, that are new, uh, constructed from the ground up, to elevate these houses with a minimum of three feet of freeboard to the lowest support joist, which means by the time you get to the finished floor, first floor of any structure, you're over five feet above grade anyway, relative to a lot of the houses that were not built within the past half a dozen years that are sitting at grade. So when somebody says, oh my God, 35 feet, that's pretty high, it is. It's allowed per regulation, and this is not a three-and-a-half-story structure, which is what 35 feet would typically do if you're able to build, as most people do, at grade. This is, a, in this particular case, it's a two-story structure with a roof that's five feet higher than it would normally be because we don't have control over that. We have to put it five feet above grade. And that, again, that's not just this house. That's any new construction that's coming that's in a flood zone or an EHA zone. It doesn't have a choice. It has to be that level. So... That doesn't necessarily sway your opinions, but just keep that in mind for the future that uh, any new houses, you've got five feet automatically basically taken out of the equation or put into the equation, depending on how you look at it, over which we have no control. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And we, re we recognize that, but I think the magnitude, like I'm seeing and what the chairman's seeing, is it's some of these rooms are pretty big. Hmm. So, I mean, they could probably still do what they're looking to do with a little bit less space. Um, I have a very small house, so all my room's like 8 by 10. It was built in 1955, so, I mean, no, and it is overbearing on some of the neighbors because it is big, and I, I mean, we've requested to try to combine them. That was our thoughts to you when we were talking to you about it before, and we came in leading with that, but I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just tough to get over the character issue, and it's probably going to be tough to get over the fees and balls from it because I really think there's... You and I know. It's the one I always question you on. It's the feasible alternative, and that's the toughest one for me. Just based on the size you're talking about? No, I think there's, I think there's another alternative. I, I think it could be smaller, or it could, it could still... I, I, I don't know. Re reasonable return, I guess, was what I was getting at. Okay. And, I mean, I get someone wants a nice big house. I'd love to have big rooms, too. But... 
and I understand the point too, Mr. Fisher, but I look at this cottage and say that's that's essentially five feet off the ground, this this little cottage. Hmm. It's, you know what I mean? So it's not five feet. I, I understand that, but I've been involved in projects down there. I don't a couple of them that have been put on pilings and met the femur flood levels and they all look pretty normal. This one looks pretty large, I have to say. And oh, bringing it up does. I agree. It does, does make it look larger to the people that are looking at it around too, because you're already, like you said, you're already five feet off the ground before you even start looking at a structure. And therein lies one of the issues, but it's only one. And uh, and to be sure, uh, to, to address your comment, um, going from a one-story structure to a, a two-and-a-half-story structure with a significant roof pitch is fairly significant. Um, I would only mention that, uh, or, or mention it with that, that uh, we have, uh, notwithstanding, you know, board's past actions, when we were here in April uh, getting reconsideration of a board, you may remember that I passed out a dozen photographs, literally 12 photographs of houses that are literally three stories, not two and a half stories, three stories that are in that end of Higgins Beach. Are they next to smaller houses that are one stories to jumping up to two and a half? Not always, to be sure, but some of them are. Um, and most of us are, if not all of us, are very familiar with Higgins Beach. Um, I would just encourage all of us, not in conjunction with this project necessarily, but to take a look at, and the next time we're down there, to take a look at some of the newer houses that are there. Some of them are, and even some of the older ones, actually, especially some of the, the, the captain's houses, as it were, that are right down on uh, base, or the, the main road that uh, fronts the ocean, are quite sizable. Some of them are actually four stories. They're older, but uh, over, what I'm getting at is overall character. Yes, you don't want to go, you know, sound like a, or go up and down all over the place. But on the other hand, if we're allowed per statute, we've got to really take into consideration that the changing demographic is going to allow people to be able to come in and take some smaller cottages that are, in some cases, 100 years old and need to be raised, and they're going to replace them with larger structures. Subjective interpretation as to what is large, to be sure, uh, but they're, almost all of them are going to get more sizable than they are right now. And to be honest with you, you were probably the person that, pointed that out to me more as to how I was looking at these with one of your pictures. Mm -hmm. The picture of the lighthouse, I don't see how that could possibly have been built down there. <laughs> I mean, because that wouldn't have been something I would have been on board for at all. And I mean, when you brought that picture, I just looked at it and I was like, how is this, how is this even allowed? Because it just it yeah. stood out so much from the character of the neighborhood. Okay. Again, I, I appreciate the discussion. And I think, again, we've grown as a board, and we change our opinions all the time based on experience. So what, would, why don't we go on to the questions, uh, unless you have more to add? No. Okay. All right, let's go to the questions. Uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Well, <laughs> given the feedback from the board already, um, <laughs> what I will do is just, uh, and I appreciate going through the questions so that we can continue to get this feedback, so when we yeah. do come back, uh, with uh, any revisions to the plans, and I presume we won't have to redo a lot of these questions as we go through right. them. Uh, so the answer would be, as you've got before, you, that the, uh, the current lot supports two separate structures that could not be sold separately or were marketed as such, and, and they had no success doing that. Uh, the previous owners thus accepted the advice of the ZBA earlier this year and sold the lot to the current owner as a property that would support a single structure. Without a variance to support a single structure, the lot could not be sold. It had been marketed for three years with no potential buyers. Because of the very small building envelope, a single structure could not be built on the lot and no reasonable return. Uh, a single structure could uh, still not be built on the lot. No reasonable return could be expected. The, the reference toward that end is the two cottages there right now um, did not yield the return to be sure, reasonable or otherwise, from the previous owners. Uh, we took the uh, the advice of the board and the people that did buy it, uh, irrespective at this point regarding the size of the structure that they're proposing. Uh, there were two structures on the lot. When those two structures need to come down uh, because they couldn't be sold that way and replaced with one structure, if they come down there's, or, or you were left in the size or the you know, locations and the sizes that they are right now, there wouldn't be any reasonable return. Uh, they, the people who owned it couldn't sell them even though they actively marketed them. So a single family house is what we're looking at. Size wise, we can certainly take a look at that in the future when we come back. Uh, but as far as reasonable return is concerned, we need to be able to put something on that lot. And that something would typically be a, uh, a single family home. I would disagree. We're not voting right now, but yeah, thank you. 
I didn't know if you were asking for our opinion. I was asking for comments, but yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I would disagree just on the basis that I think something, and if we're doing a finding of fact or anything, that it, it, it seems like something a little bit smaller could be built there and could still yield a reasonable return. Sure, but notwithstanding size, there's no issue as far as tearing down the existing cottages and building another house there. I, I'm no. all for no. doing the one structure. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. And I'm the same way. Getting, I think. Can we also talk about the accessory unit? Of course. In this case, I, I think putting an accessory unit inside this structure is a reasonable thought process, having two separate buildings to start out with, going to a single building, trying to have the same use. So getting an accessory unit inside the structure makes sense to me. So I don't think you're pushing the envelope trying to do that. So I, I think that's reasonable. So I think that can be accomplished. Yeah, as long as we uh -huh. can get that put through correct it's got to go through the town DEP. to be able to be okay with DEP I have no problem with that either right I, I think that's a great way to do it especially with a child with disabilities I I have one myself and I'm hoping he'll be living on his own when he's 25 but I don't know uh, mr. Richard in your opinion do you have an issue with the accessory unit being allowed in this structure no I, d I don't okay I don't. okay any issues no, my comments okay. mimic the others on the board. Okay. So okay. Does, that, does that give you good, good enough yes. guidance? Okay. Thank you. Uh, question two. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not a general condition in the neighborhood. Uh, this is a fairly simple one. The variance uh, will enhance the neighborhood character by replacing two existing detached units with one structure, thereby bringing it into greater conformity with the area than what is already there currently. Um, you'll note that in most areas of town, but in particular Higgins Beach as well, most of the, uh, the character of the neighborhood is typically uh, taken up by one structure. Um, so I think it's a great enhancement, certainly not a detriment, to get rid of the two smaller cottages there and actually combine them into one house, irrespective at this point what the size of that house would be. I, I would agree because I, I like the fact that you're combining them into one. Uh, the cottages look like they need some work. They look like they've probably got some substandard, probably electrical or other issues there. So you're bringing it up in more kind of range. <coughs> you're enhancing the neighbor's values as well with a, a newer home that's going to make it look better. I agree. And again, like you had said, um, taking into effect the, um, the uh, FEMA floodplain requirements, raising it five feet above the ground, um, I can certainly appreciate that, and obviously combining the two units into one, two significantly older units. Um, so yes, I agree with this point. And I think also to add to this, uh, the unique circumstance of this property is that it has two structures. Yes. You don't find many that have two structures down there, so I think this is a obvious yes based on that. Okay. And it was encouraged to be sold as one to come back before. You did attempt to do that, and or the owners attempted to do that, and they found that they couldn't, so. Okay, thank you. For third question, the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, the uh, variance will enhance the neighborhood character uh, by replacing two existing detached units with one structure, bringing the lot into greater conformity with the area than what is there. Um, so uh, there too, I don't think that there's any problem as far as uh, character of neighborhood regarding a single house will work on the size. Okay. Um struggle with this one just from the comment from the neighbors I, I think this is looking at the pictures that we saw up there I think it doesn't fit with the surrounding houses around yes there's probably houses down there that are bigger and it probably would be in the character with those and I don't know if there's anything that could be done I mean I'm just throwing this out there I know you've got an accessory unit maybe there's something in the middle where there could be a deck area where the two came together or something less imposing of one big structure I don't know that may be not something that could even be done, but then at least you've kind of got like one property together, but breaks it up a little bit so it's not this big thing right there in front of the neighbors. We can certainly ask them. And it gives the other person, it gives their adult child a little bit of privacy too. Mm -hmm. We're up. I have nothing to add. I was just, was to add, I just was thinking another thought, but I'll, I'll wait for that. Okay. In word form, I can I, I can agree with the statement that you're taking two again older older structures and replacing them with one newer structure. Uh, however, um, 
I am struggling with, uh, after viewing the plans, the, just the, the, the significant size of this building matching the existing character of that neighborhood, um, having have gone through that neighborhood myself. Um, I'm just struggling with it right now, that's all. And I, I think my opinion on this one is we've talked about physical size of the structure, and I think in different areas of Higgins Beach, there are larger structures. But this is like urban sprawl, right? How do you get urban sprawl? It's one step at a time. It's moving out from the center of the city and moving all of that building structure away from the center of the city. And I'm looking at this as if it's urban sprawl. We, want, we now are taking the next step. We're putting the next big building in smaller buildings. So to me, in, in that statement, you're changing the character. It's now creeping out further from where we've already got it, and it's going out into other areas. So I think it's just one more step. And it's cha it will change the character in this particular location. You're surrounded by smaller buildings. And, and I know you've come to us with pictures of there's a one and a half, there's a two and a half, there's a two and a half. But it seemed like it was more concentrated. I'm pretty familiar with this area, and I think this one's going to stick out, my opinion. Even the last one you did that was bigger was right across the street from the other one that was bigger. Right. So it made it a little bit easier for us to look at this and go, okay, well, the neighbor's got a pretty big house over there. They don't have a small cottage, at least. And you were trying to mirror that, too, by putting the, mm. the rooftop deck and things. So you were trying to really accentuate the neighbor, neighbor character of the neighborhood as opposed to changing it. I mean, you were working to kind of grow the two together, which was appreciated. Okay. So I think if you would work with the family and, and try to minimize, I think it certainly would be beneficial okay and I know I, and I empathize with the people that are doing this modification they want to get as big a structure as possible because you want to get the value you want to get usable space I understand that but I, I think in order to make it work for us it's gonna have to come down a little bit and that's that's my opinion though I'm not I don't want to speak for the board but that's my opinion understood my comment was, was Brian, when this, as we discussed with Mr. Watson, wouldn't this be a perfect candidate for a reduction in yard size and working within the envelope? And it's going to be really hard, though, with the two existing cottages to, to really reuse those because you have to maintain some the maintain structure. Them. And I think in this case it would be very difficult to make something work with limited reduction of yard size. And as Mr. Wilson said, there is an available envelope. If you go by the rules, then it's... It's a stick of gum. Yeah, it doesn't look like either one of those structures or anything you'd really want to try to build new off from either. The existing ones? Yeah. No, that's no, those. You run out of hard enough, and they're going to fall down. Yeah. With with some of the proposed, you know, still in draft form and and yet to be, you know, for public consumption. But some of the proposed amendments, um, those 15 foot side and rear yard setbacks would be reduced with the additions of some porches and some lower structures and it's sort of a tapered effect where you go up to the higher part of the structure in the center of the lot but at least you can have something I'm not sure what the distance will be but in the neighborhood of seven or eight feet which is pretty close to what mm -hmm. you're asking for and not require a variance and and that's kind of part of this whole puzzle is having to review this under the four criteria as opposed to being able to permit it without a variance would be a world of difference and it's going to be maybe a little more of a challenge for the designer to design something for this family that works for this family but still you can do it without coming and having to meet those criteria with the amendments and, and I I know you said you opened the, the, the comments by saying that time frame doesn't work for this family but it may be their only option and, and, and it'll be a good option, I hope, once the amendments are enacted and give them more of what they need without having to, to come before this board and, and address those criteria. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something to think about. And any other comments on the third question? Okay. Fourth question. The hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. 
Uh, that is correct. The hardship is the result of zoning that was enacted long after this lot was created and the building constructed, thereby restricting any new construction to an extremely small building envelope that is wholly impractical for any residential uh, structure. This is sort of a generic almost when we're dealing with uh, uh, lots and houses on those respective lots, whether it's Higgins Beach or anywhere else that predate zoning. Uh, the hardship was not actually created by the current owner or any previous owners. The houses were built as they were on any given lot, and the lots were created at a relatively small size way back when. Uh, so it's not anybody's fault. It's just zoning came on after the fact and causes us significant restrictions. Yeah. That's a relatively simple one, but I'll leave that to the board. Yeah, I would agree it is relatively simple on this one. It, it, I don't see any way that that would be a no for me. That's definitely... Yeah. I think we're all in agreement. So as I understand it, if I may, if this is the appropriate time, Certainly. it sounds like there's really not an issue notwithstanding vertical size. Um, and uh, obviously I'm not going to hold anybody to anything uh, official this evening, but uh, toward that end, the feedback we get is the lots basically fine. A single-family residential house is pretty fine. Everything basically meets the criteria except for the overall volume of the house. Yeah, to me... I, I, did you say it wasn't a three-story home? No. Okay. It's, it's a two-and-a-half story. Well, call it what it is. Because I see a bedroom on the third floor, and to me that... that it's hmm. a dorm. Oh, it's a dorm. Yeah. Okay. Two okay. small okay. dormers in the middle. Okay. Yeah, it's two-and-a-half kids. have no basement. Because to me, it appears like it's a three-story home. It looks very tall to me. And I know you, you add, automatically you add five feet, so you get a five-foot disadvantage right there. I get that. But And everybody's going to have that from this point forward. Right. Just... That's a generic. That's thing. a given. It's, uh, it just looks awful tall to me, um, and, and long. I mean, it's long as well. But I, I'm not. I, I don't want to push you in one direction. Uh, uh, yeah, if you could reduce the envelope, I think certainly that would be a big a big benefit. Understood. Any General comments, agreement. You want a I, I, or uh, no, I'm just trying to give I, Mr. Fisher. It, I, I think where we're going is to table. Yes, we'd like. And to table I just this. want to give him as much advice as we can, so he doesn't come back with wrong information and well, I wastes think, his time. I think the other advice, Mr. Longstaff, just had suggested on the new maps or new plans to have the driveway calculations and the um, what else were you looking for? Vegetation on there. So and, uh, we can definitely see that as well. Oh, yeah, we have that. I'll just, I can pop that under the plan. That's and easy. we still need to get DEP opinion on the accessory unit as well. They could trump us. Yeah. So we still need that information back from them. We as will well. need to get, will you be able to get that to yeah. Mr. Fisher? Yeah, I can, uh, I can probably have an answer on that fairly quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to do, which is a little bit out of order, <laughs> there was a young lady in the audience that wanted to say something earlier. You still want to speak? I'm going to give her a moment to come up and speak, and then I'll let you rebut if there's, if need be. So I'm going to open it up to the public. And name again and address, Mary please. Marianne McGoldrick, 19, 21 Vesper Street. Thank you. Um, what is the actual square footage of the two buildings put together? What was the square, square footage in that? Mm-hmm. And what is the square, the total square footage in the new building? Right. I haven't heard those numbers at all. And, and that was one thing we didn't get from Mr. Fisher, and he's going to get us. Right now, I can give, we can give it on a percentage of the overall lot footage. No, I mean it, of the building itself, the Correct. living space. What is the square feet? Like Mr. a 10 Chair. by 10 room is 1,000 square feet. Um, what is the square footage for this new building? Okay. I, I think the architect, when he was speaking to us, said it was almost double. That that was the volume, I believe. The square footage. You talking to usables? I'm talking total space? living area square footage. Square footage. Or just the plan. Of view. living space. Okay, gotcha. Going. Yeah. Like it the, seems the, like the living area would be about doubled. Is that? Yeah, I think that that sounds right, especially since be, it's it has two to and be a half number. stories. I mean, every time you build a house, it's either three thousand square feet. We just right. heard the people before us thirty-five hundred square right. feet, uh, four thousand square feet. What is the square footage of that? On that's the part new of the building? information we're asking from the uh, the people that are doing the design, and we should get hopefully get that on the next plan. Mr. We're Chairman, looking for I think outside. We've, I think we've got it here. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is for the building only. This, okay. this is not the non vegetated surface. Yeah. It's hard to make out, but I'm, if I'm reading it correctly, the existing building coverage, he's got it 1,740 square feet. 
and the new proposed building coverage is 1737.75 square feet. Does that sound right? Sounds right, mm -hmm. but that's including exterior decks. The new building has more exterior decks than the two cottages. Right. Okay, is that the a little deceiving in, in, the, in the square footage, but yes, it's less than the two combined. Is that just the first floor? That's a plan first view, right? Okay, the second yeah. floor is where it doubles. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's going to be in the range of right now they're saying 1,700. It's going to be probably 3,500 square feet. That's of the number I was space. looking for. Yeah. That's Once the you pull off the decks. That includes the yeah. Unit total. Right. Yeah. 34, right. 3,500 total. Okay. So so that's a that's a ballpark. Yeah. That's the number I was looking for. Okay. Rather impressive. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to close the public meeting again. Gentlemen, any more questions or comments? And Mr. Fisher, do you believe you have enough information to go from here and, and have useful, useful time to spend with the town and yes. get something done? Okay. I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Richard. Just, just a comment before Mr. Fisher leaves. Uh, I know these, these two appeals aren't tied together, but it seems like we sent Mr. Wilson off with a different feeling of coming back with something completely in the building envelope because of one of the criteria that wasn't met, the reasonable return. and. I don't think we've left Mr. Fisher with that same impression because I don't see any difference in the two appeals in terms of what's a reasonable return. I, I, I haven't differentiated between the two. And right. I think we're giving Mr. Fisher the feeling that he's okay with that. He just needs to go back and shrink the building down, whereas Mr. Watson left, and that wasn't the opinion we gave him. We gave him the opinion that he had to be within the building envelope or – Mary lots and all that and and that's that's where I that's where the, I'm a bit confused the reason I'm not pushing on the reasonable return from the previous case is because the building that he's putting up is so small yeah it from a reasonable return standpoint he's not trying to maximize his profitability he's putting a building structure on there that he can get storage and have somebody live in and he we just want to get him into the envelope so that he's within compliance in here I think they're trying to keep the same envelope, right, the same square footage from a plan view, but now they've gone up so much to me, it's gotten really big. That, that's, again, that's my opinion. Yeah, because right. the envelope's pretty similar to what, they when you were overlapping those buildings, I think you actually came down on the buildable envelope. But I don't see, yes. just my opinion, I don't yeah. see how, if Mr. Watson came in with a three-story structure, how that differs from a one-story structure meeting the criteria of a reasonable return. Right. That's where I'm confused. Does that make sense? You know, I mean, just because they, they've come in here and re requested much bigger, doesn't seem like at the, at the crux of it all, it's still the same question. It, it, it is. But I'm, I'm kind of approaching it in a different fashion, I guess, from, okay. from, from my opinion. And I'm, I'm not arguing, I'm just, yeah. just, just yeah. from my own mind, because I know we're going to see Mr. Fisher again, and we're probably going to see Mr. Watson again, my guess. Yeah. And I yeah, just as a board, I think we should try to be consistent. I, it's I, important. I think we were. Am I missing? No, no. Have no. Been, because okay. we've been trying to keep it within that building envelope, and he wasn't really close to the building envelope. They were actually under the building envelope, so that's why. No, we, no. The building the building envelope is is the actual dimension of what meets the setbacks. That's the building envelope. You know, am I correct, Brian, by saying that the building envelope is? The build, there is no building envelope, first of all. Okay. No real building envelope. Well, yeah, there's a 20 foot. There's a 20 foot wide okay. building. Okay. The difference between the two appeals was there is a much bigger buildable envelope on the Prouts Neck property on the Winslow Homer Road than there is here. And another distinct difference is the same owner owned three par parcels there. So it, the whole reasonable return question has a completely different complexion in my mind okay. than it does for somebody who bought a single family dwelling lot doesn't own property on either side, and they bought the dwelling lot for the purpose based on the zoning board's instruction that two dwellings could be made into one and then and they could probably approve so the, it. So that changes the criteria. So if Mr. Zilka sells that property to well, whoever, if he sells that property, then the criteria changes it because could. the ownership changes? It could. Okay. It, it changes the complexion of the, of the ask. Okay. In that regard, I'm just asking these questions because I, it, to me, I got to make sense. Because somebody else isn't going to buy that lot f just to have fair ground. 
<laughs> and it, it's fair to ask clarification because yeah. it's in, an educational process here. So. And, and part of the question, too, and what, what did differ in the, in the question was the, the reasonable return in Mr. Watson's case. And I, I had more sympathy for that because view is very important because the town taxes you very heavily for that view. They pay a pretty pain to be down there. So my thought is it, 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 it is a reasonable request. I know because the topography of the law, it's very unique. That's, that's what I think is, but is I, If I may, I don't think view is part of the assessed value. It's the location, which has a view, but it's not the view itself, <laughs> I think, to be clear. <laughs> it, 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 it is the view. It is the view. It's everything. If the house has no view or has a view, the, the, the dollar amount I'm changes dramatically. I'm not the assessor, so I probably shouldn't say that, but I don't believe Well, I know they do it in rings, but the rings are in direct relation to a view. So if, if, a, if you were to ask a broker, I have a house with a view or not with a view, the price is going to be very different, very different. And, 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 okay. and that is, I don't think we could argue that. <laughs> the Silkus Clay case, I think that the topography forces him back to maintain that view because that is the value of the property. I know for a fact that houses inside the neck down there don't bring in what the houses on the outside of the neck bring with the views. Very dramatic difference in price. A lot of that's... Okay. Anyways, but Does I'm just trying to wrap my hands around both of these because they seem very similar to me, and I think that was sending Mr. Fisher off thinking that he shrinks the house, but yeah, he's still way outside of his building envelope, and somehow he's met the reasonable return. He's, he's met that criteria. That's why I can't, um, that's what I'm right. having trouble with. And, and again, the, the question is a tough qu question to answer. Mm -hmm. The way it's written, the line's yes, question cannot yield a reasonable return. What does reasonable return mean to me? What's it mean to you? It could be two totally different answers. Okay. And like Mr. Hollis has said, you could put a hammock out there and use it to go out and just lay down and check out the view. That's considered by the court of law. Well, that's what I'm getting at. That's what Mr. Greger, that's what I'm getting at. We're yeah. saying Mr. Fisher with the assumption that if he shrinks the building, he's met that criteria that you're mentioning. Well, he could tear the buildings down and put a hammock there, and he's right. You're, that's your argument. So that's what I'm saying. We're sending him off. There, <coughs> that if he just makes it a one and a half story, we're going to grant that variance. But Mr. Watson has to then put his building inside the building envelope, but we're not asking that of Mr. Fisher, and I don't see a difference in the cases. That's the, that's the problem I'm having. Yeah. Again, to me, I'm, I'm calling it a non-building lot, but 20 feet wide doesn't really give you much of a living space, because once you have a hallway, you t subtract three feet off that, now you're 17 feet. And then you've got eaves, and you've got all those other things that shrink that space. So to me, 20 feet is not a very wide building envelope. So, and I think the, the previous case had a bigger envelope, one much more reasonable to put a building on. Because you easily got a two car garage, that's what, 24 feet, something along those lines. So to me, the envelope, that four feet is huge to me. And again, Mr. Fisher may be the beneficiary of a, of a zoning change yeah. that Mr. Longstaff just said. So if they were to reduce that by five feet on each side, then all of a sudden your building envelope is 30 feet, which is right. plenty of right. space right. not to come back here. Right. So, okay. You're good? I am. Motion. Gentlemen, motion. Motion to the table, appeal 23, excuse me, 2555. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So that was the last appeal for the evening. Um, any comments or questions from the board before we close the meeting? Do I have a motion? Oh, we've got one from the town. Just wanted to reiterate uh, on that? September 1st. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, Tuesday, September 1st at 7 p.m. The Higgins at the Higgins Beach Association Clubhouse, 49 Greenwood Ave. For all those folks down to Higgins Beach, there will be an unveiling of the draft ordinance. It's still a working draft, but just to kind of check in and see if we're heading in the right direction. So I'd encourage all you folks that are from Higgins Beach, out there in TV Land, too, um, to attend. Again, September 1st. That's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the Higgins Beach uh, Association Clubhouse, 49 Greenwood Ave. Um, one other thing, we still have an open alternate member slot here on the Zoning Board of Appeals. We would love to have 
someone um, <laughs> apply, and if you just go to the home page, or excuse me, the town council page uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, town's website, there's an application button down there. You click application and you apply, and we'd love to have another member on the board. The pay is excellent. So if you if you don't want to do it, talk to people who you think might want to do it. <laughs> And, uh, and encourage and invite a friend and I would encourage the board members to do the same. Think of somebody that you know uh, we really need and tonight's a good example of that. We had just four members. If we'd have had another alternate we would have had perhaps another member which m might have tipped the scales one way or right. the other for some of these applicants. So it's really important. It's important work and uh, thank you. I the scales are pretty one-sided to me. Here. Brian, yes. that draft ordinance should be on the website next week. Okay. Good point. Yes. Just because we have it. By up. the week, uh, yeah, by the week of August 24th, you should be able to find the draft ordinance that will be reviewed on the website under the Higgins Beach Zoning Repair. Oh, I really know that. Motion to adjourn. I hear a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Meeting's closed. Thank you very much, people. Thank you. Thank you. Mm.